Hi. I am too. You couldn't. You, you high, puked bro? the stars, dog. I didn't puke all of them. Oh, you got to leave at least the three more. Shit. Get your fucking no. life in order, Lee. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You fucking muscle hamster. <laughs> <laughs> this show is presented by On It. The Church of What's Happening Now is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. The new year means a fresh start for your business, and a great year starts with great making great hires. Our listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash church. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash church. ZipRecruiter.com slash church. The show is also brought to you by Lyft. Go to Lyft.com. Lyft is where drivers can make up to $35 an hour, and getting started is just a tap away. Sign up today at Lyft.com slash Joey. Sign up today to drive for Lyft at Lyft.com slash Joey. Oh shit, kick that mule motherfucker. It's all over. It's 2017. The restraining order is over. It's over. We're kicking this mule with Theo Vaughn, my nephew Lee Sayat, and your uncle motherfucking Joey. Kick it, Lee. Blast the fucking speakers. I want the speakers to blow up, Lee. I want to see somebody's balls blow off their body, bruh. I want to see my dick try to fuck my ass, bro. Let's party. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. What's happening, you bad motherfuckers? Happy New Year to you and yours. I hope this is a happy year for you. I hope you're healthy. Because if you ain't healthy, you can't get your dick sucked, and you cannot make any gitas. You understand me? You can't hug your kids. So, uh, my number one, my one of my favorite people in this fucking city, is on the show tonight. Theo Vaughn, my little fucking Jewish nephew, who already started the new year off puking the edibles tonight. I don't know and what this happened. Is, you know what happened. You know, you know what, what happened, happened, bro. You know what happened. Fucking little money. You're away from stuff. me for a week, and you didn't keep up the training. Okay. First of all, the, not, I don't want to hear a story. Mm. I don't want to hear Excuses. a story. I know exactly what happened. Ten years, you've never puked around me, except that one night on the ass. But that night, we went deep. Mm. I even burped in my own mouth that night. <laughs> wow. You know what I'm saying? Did you really? Yeah, you burp a little mushroom. You piss, and all of a sudden, you get a burp. And a little bit of belly cum, bro. A little bit of fucking yellow acid <laughs> fluid. But keeps your tongue we were warm, going though. four or five hours that night, Lee. I took you to the, I took you to fucking SEAL training that night. I had you going under fucking barbed wire and shit. That was something that I felt horrible about. But tonight, you didn't even let the medication hit you, and you fucking those chocolate La Luna is. But you told me you bought four of them and took them down to Long Beach. I did. You can see. I, I have video evidence. That's why. This is why. The, the, did you the, eat the whole thing? Of course I did. What do you mean eat the whole did thing? Did you eat it off camera and do magician tricks like no, you did to I me didn't. in the beginning? No, I never do it. I used to have to watch him. He would put the, He's a Jew. The yeah. Jew got those fingers. They move real. Best magician for the Jews. They never <laughs> yeah, they made, yeah. Not a big living. Oh, they keep 10% of the trick yeah, in their they, pocket. Oh, yeah. They yeah. invented the fucking magician. Yeah. Fucking Jews. They, that's who invented the magician. The Beautiful. Jew with the black top yeah. hat and shit. Yeah, they're all magicians <laughs> out of the womb, bro. So, Lee, man, you. Nah, yeah, nah, last time I saw up. Lee was over here squealing on the panel. Oh, yeah, we were <laughs> fucked up. Fucked up. <laughs> bro, and the craziest part about that, Joey, was when I came in, I thought I heard a. I'm like, there's kind of a squealing in the microphone at first. And Lee's like, I'll fix it. And by the end, it you was like, him. You. It was him. He's like, ah. <laughs> Look like a fucking disabled gerbil, bro. <laughs> Look like a fucking. <laughs> That's how I felt. That was like the the deepest I've ever been on mushrooms. Oh, dang, he looked like a damn welfare gerbil. Oh he was God. over here just like... It was chocolate mushrooms that smelled like Parmesan cheese. <laughs> <laughs> he was eating it, and it was foaming out of his mouth. I just put it in my mouth and drank it. I didn't deal with it. He yeah. wants to fucking chew it. He wants to snack it the all. He thinks it's Anthony Bourdain. <laughs> you got to swallow them drugs, dog. You can't be fucking That's around. what I tried to do tonight, and that's why I puked up oh, all over the floor. Because you said you, you were making fun of me. You are like, just swallow that just motherfucking, swallow thing, that motherfucking thing, Lee. And it was like still a whole chunk. And my body just is like, 
I think my body is starting to fight back because I, I wasn't getting that fucked fight up over back. the weekend. Because you do them every night and you do little amounts. You got to go deep, I, deep, deep. You got to get into it, 16, 1800 by yourself. <laughs> yeah, you got to get your bowels high, Lee. Yeah. I ain't 800. 800 don't do nothing for nobody. Yes, yeah. it does. That's, what are you that's an about? appetizer in your world. And first that's of all, no, minutes. I was doing over 1,000. No, you weren't. I was, I know, too. I know you. You got to get your bowels high, bro. I want to fucking. I, wanna, know, I want so, your shit to be scared. So that's funny. how high you got to get. It's so funny. We were having a conversation before the podcast started about, you know, about this is it. Like, I guarantee you there's a lot of people today walking around <laughs> with an ice pack on their head going, what the fuck happened two nights ago? Yeah. Like, I went out to get two drinks, and I ended up blowing four guys. And <laughs> <laughs> my asshole shut. You know, you don't you don't know what realm you get into, you know. And uh, when we spoke today, right off the bat, you were like, listen, dog, I'm trying to keep my life together. I'm a young dude. I'm good looking. I don't want to fade away. So I've been behaving myself. Was your main thing alcohol? And then you went crazy. Yeah, I mean, well, I just ended up getting key, you know, like, I ended up getting into drugs usually sometimes at night, you But know? drugs without the alcohol, or they have alcohol had to soften you up first? I think I would just, you know, that's a good question, man. Alcohol was never, has never been a thing for me. I never cared about alcohol. I just, once people started having cocaine around, I, I just kind of liked the smell of it, you know what I'm saying, bro? What about meth? <laughs> nothing else up your nose? Oh, no, nothing like that, nothing dude. Like that. We used to do, like, uh, back in the day, some dude came through the neighborhood, I remember, with some kind of, uh, I don't know what, LSD suppository, some kind of suppositories, dude, people were doing, oh my God. yeah, do, uh, it was like, just do, you know, putting these, like, little, they were kind of, uh, I don't want to say pink, they were kind of reddish looking little... <laughs> fucking throwing rainbow treats up your it's ass not, it's you not know? manly enough if it's pink i mean it was yeah and people was doing ls these lsd suppositories <laughs> this dude had about a i remember he probably had about 400 of them <laughs> i don't know where he got them from germany or somewhere iceland or something you know and to us that was like they got them from saturn you know we never even heard of that germany you know we'll fucking do this and people were doing acid you know uh, or L whatever it was doing the suppositories i remember for a while so i like psychedelics a little bit when i was younger uh and what else, dude? And then, but out here, I don't know what happened. I just had a couple of crazy nights. And then uh, I was like, I'm going to try something different, man. So I just decided I'm going to stop partying. So and now i got about six months. I've been sober since I'm... Well, last time I walked out of here, I went over to the improv and did a set high on mushrooms. And they were flicking the lights on on stage, bro. <laughs> I still have it on video, man. I'll put it out. I'll put it out for your, uh, for, for it, your legion. Bro. How old are you now? 36, man. I'm an adult. It's tough to say to yourself, this is it. You know, you have those nights, and like we were saying, you had a, a spectacular night in my world. Like, where I came from, that's a spectacular night. Oh, yeah. Getting in a cab, going for blow. Uh, then the the guy hooks you up with a chick. You fucked the chick in the cab. No, he did. Oh, he fucked her in the cab. Oh, no, no, this is craziness. Now, what time did this night end? Dude, so what happened with that night was... Let me revamp it for you. So what Hit happened me. was I went to a party, bro, and I didn't even plan on drinking. No, you're in New York doing comedy. I'm in comedy. New York City. Yep, I'm in New York City. Yep, I was doing comedy. I had a sublet there. I was just kind of experiencing the city. We talked once or twice when I was there, you know, and I was enjoying it, man. It was good. And then I got I went to a party one night, and afterwards, they and they were drinking at the party. And, uh, and I just felt uncomfortable, dude. To be honest, man, most of my life I have felt uncomfortable, bro. I don't know what it is. Like in... A lot of environments, I just feel uncomfortable. Bro. Out of place. Out of place. Yeah, dude. yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel that ever? Oh, uh, all the time. What do you mean ever? There's, there's, I, there's more times that I feel <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. in place. Like that's, like the, that's the weird times. But it's yeah. like my my girlfriend and I were just talking about it because we stayed in on New Year's Eve. Yeah. But seeing the shots of Times Square and seeing the shots of the clubs. Maybe I should have done something a little bit more social, but that's that is not. I would I would rather I'd rather be in a box than in a club. Like yeah. it seemed, it's that that would feel so uncomfortable there. Like yeah. a, a New Year's Eve like club, like that's not me at all. Well, you don't see in a club too. They just show you the picture. You don't see people getting fucking molested in the background and people, okay. you know. But at least light a candle or something for your lady. Do you do anything? Oh well, yeah. Well, we. we <laughs> He's gonna Joey's gonna make fun of me. We went away the weekend before. We went to Long Beach. As funny as it sounds, <laughs> took a trip to Long Beach. Dude. Is, I don't know. Is, Probably to pick up rent. Right? This is, this is amazing. This is just amazing. 
So anyway, bro, I can't even get what it did. That was it? You took your girl to a fucking lobby? No, she took me. She took me. Jesus Christ. Bro. But then we just decided to come home because it was raining. Because <laughs> it was raining? Yeah, what are we going to sit in someone else's apartment on New Year's Eve down in Long Beach when I have a nicer apartment up here? Uh, bro, what the fuck? It's, it's a horror show. I tried. And I keep it losing, like them. The I'm losing them by the month. <laughs> it sounds like the notebook for two people go, on Down is, Syndrome. No, bro. no, this was something that when he told me, I go, what? Now, when he <laughs> told me, I thought they were going to leave <laughs> Friday night, go to a hotel like yeah. normal Americans, right? Yeah. Wake up in the morning, get a little room service, gives her a stabbing. Yeah. Take a walk down, come back, smoke a joint, eat a star, maybe about six, take it to a nice fucking restaurant, six, seven o'clock sitting, dog. So you're out of there by 9.30, you take it back to the apartment, give it straight up, eat three more stars and watch some stupid movie. I thought that's what he was doing. America. I got a call from him Thursday at lunchtime. So, yeah, 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 we're about to leave. I go, leave where? <laughs> Long Beach. I, I almost shot myself in the fucking head. I go, this kid can't be this stupid. And then I, that night I went out to dinner. I had to do a set last week. And... I had two hours to kill. I, I said, told my wife, don't even make dinner. I'm going to eat dinner in Hollywood. There's no sense in me coming back. Yeah. I did a set for Penn State. So I had two hours to kill, so I went to Chibo. That's one of my favorite places Is it a good Hollywood. place? I've never even been there. I see I it. I don't eat the pizza. I don't eat none of that shit. I get the salad. It's delicious. Mm. The, the minute, whatever salad. And the Big Mama spaghetti with no meat. Just pasta with sauce and ricotta cheese. It's and they good. give you a small serving. It's always been good. I've been eating there for fucking years. Wow. And that's what I eat. I, I go there three down. times a year, though. If I'm lucky, I got three times to drive by. I got an hour here. Yeah. I got an audition. I plan it. I go, okay. I got an hour and a half. I might as well go to fucking uh, Chibos Chibo and I get excited. You yeah. Know? I sit next to a guy. I go to the bar and I see the bartender. And he's an old door guy from the improv. We start chit chatting. Two things down for me is a guy from Emerson College. And right away, I got to ask him. I had to ask him, what do they teach you up there? Because I know we got from Emerson College. And I don't know. I'm not sure anymore. I go, I hired him because I thought he was sharper than I was. But lately, he's been slipping. I don't know what the fuck is going on. And that was Lee? That was Lee. Wow. He went to Long Beach Thursday afternoon for New Year's. Now, I could see it. Like I said, Friday after all the traffic is done. Now, nah, here's the best one. Here's the best one out of all of them. <laughs> I call him Thursday night, or he calls me. We're talking, and the conversation. And all of a sudden, he goes, "Yeah, we Airbnb." I go, "You're not even in a fucking hotel with like a fucking elliptical that you go to the elliptical. You've been home all week with her, and now you go down there for two more fucking nights with her to do nothing, to look at each other and eat cookies and shit at a stranger's apartment and watch really bad TV in a stranger's apartment. This was something that I was like, squatters, bro. I don't know." <laughs> like You're what? fucking squatters. When he dude. called me Saturday and told me he was coming back, I wanted to tell him just GPS the car to the ocean, <laughs> to the Santa Monica Pier, and take the car right off the fucking pier. Then, because it ain't getting no better in your life. He went away to Long Beach, and every morning when I woke up since that, today there was a burglary in Long Beach where the guy <laughs> shot the burglar. He shot the burglar every day. I woke up and that that morning, I, all I was waiting you for. You were praying it, for it to be like Lee's apartment. No, nah, like to see Lee fucking shot in the head. Like <laughs> Lee got hit by a car coming with a box of wings. They got poor girlfriend on the thing. I don't know what happened. The guy didn't stop for the red light. The, the saddest part is, is who the fuck goes to Long Beach? For I vacation? don't know. Okay, Lee used to treat himself to a nice night at Chibo at the bar. And now, a few years later, he's finally got a girl. No, that wasn't me. That was, he was at Chibo that night, and he was thinking about me. Because yeah, uh. the guy was from Emerson. I had to ask him, what do they teach you there? <laughs> do they teach you anything? Or what the fuck do you have to eat there? I'll be honest. Okay. This was a... We, we, we don't have... We couldn't fly anywhere. We didn't have enough time. So, this is what she chose. But we had, we actually had a good time. The a fucking aquarium and Queen Mary are fucking awesome when you're stoned as fuck. Oh. But this is what I will... I did want to talk to you guys about. Years old. You see what I got to deal with? <laughs> Airbnb. Yeah. The aquarium. Is... <laughs> You, you're, it feels like squat. Like it was the weirdest experience of my life. They let you touch any animals. They got the pet and zoo in there. Uh, yeah. Of well, at the aquarium, yeah. But at the, I thought, I, I thought you were talking about the apartment for a second. <laughs> no, like, not at the Airbnb, dude. <laughs> you fucking like there's <laughs> other roommates. Like there's roaches in the apartment. You massage other roommates. No, thank God there weren't roommates. 
<laughs> this guy. Imagine if there was a roommate. He takes his lady out. No, it, no, it's, it was it's like, a horror show. Yeah. I live, I live in a fucking world between him and my wife. I'm not gonna make it to fifty six. <laughs> I'm not going to make it. The f I just spent Damn, four weeks man. in that house with my wife. Wow. It's a torture chamber. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fucking house of horrors. I love it with all my heart. It's a, it's a torture house of, chamber. What's the worst part? Like, what's the worst part? Uh, Honestly. It, it being 930. In the morning? At night. Mm -hmm. And just sitting there, not having a spot because... I don't want to be at the store every night, bro. Yeah. You know, I don't want to be that guy. Yeah. I don't need to be at the store every night. There's young guys coming up. I know how I felt when I was coming up, and I had shit to do, and there's some old guy that's coming down. I'm good enough. Two spots a week, I'm good. This good. week, I'm doing Thursday. Tomorrow night, I'll do flappers. If I get out of jiu-jitsu early Wednesday, I'll pop into someplace. But, you know, I got a gig Friday. I'm fucking good. I'm not working on nothing or nothing. I'm just putting them through couple bits together finding my new fucking voice you know yeah it's like uh when you travel it breaks the monotony up a little bit oh yeah and it was i was home for four fucking weeks and it was the holidays and one of those weeks the baby was home all mm -hmm. week that's tough a baby's week. off of school all week one week vacation <laughs> what did the and it rained three of those oh, days you know what i'm saying so she wanted to ride the bicycle. That's like a triple threat of. So do parents hate. And the vacations? truth of the matter is, the truth of the matter is that my, I'm a dud. I've always been a dud. You know, Lee says that he feels uncomfortable. Up, I tell you what I where I feel comfortable. I I feel comfortable in a bar where the bartender's a good looking woman in 1924. Yeah. She still has tits. She wears push-up bras. She's got freckles on her tits. She's got a sense of humor. The bar seats 20. She serves some fucking food in there that's kick-ass. There's a jukebox. There's music. You know what? At this age, I don't want a fucking pool table. Yeah. And I don't want a dartboard. I don't want a lot of movement. I never like movement. Yeah. Sit down, have a fucking bee, and talk to me if you want to do this. If you're going to be moving around... Go somewhere else. Shoot yeah. pool and arguments, and I can't walk. This guy's throwing a fucking dart at me. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I I just want to be. You know what I'm saying? Like that's what yeah. I want to do. That's my ideal bar. And to be strictly honest with you, since the age of 16, that was always my ideal bar. Once we started going out to those discos, I've said it once. I've said it before. My wife asked me on the ride home the other day from dinner. We were listening to Studio 54 on uh, Sirius XM, and she goes, so you used to go disco dancing? I go, are you crazy? I was a kid when that shit came out. Yeah. I go, when I was in high school, I could put a handful of times I went to clubs. Huh. Went to studio, but I went to studio in 84. <laughs> there was nothing going on in the studio no more. Fuck it was a Thursday no. night. 84? Yeah, I was going to Club Aria like twice. I went to like the rooftop four, five, six times. But I was never a club guy, bro. Yeah. Look at me. I knew who the fuck I was. I belonged in a neighborhood bar with a bartender named Lila. Yeah. She had a dog behind the bar. The dog slept the whole fucking time. And that's the bar I grew up in, Joe and Mary's. They had a little circular biscuit thing, like a Dana, like a, a bakery thing mm. in the middle. And it would have a cover. And in the middle, there was ham and cheese sandwiches. Oh, that's beautiful. Had. So if you want a sandwich, you just went over and got it. They had Stewart sandwiches. And next to it was a... a not don't cook tonight called chicken delight it was a chicka fill not chick-fil-a this is when chicken was chicken and one of the kids we hung with was the fucking cook mm. so at the end of the shift he'd come over to the bar with a box of chicken from the leftover chicken beautiful from the whole fucking night it was and you had a tab mm -hmm. and the guy that ran the place was a, a loan shark so you could, if you fucking you could needed buy, to yeah. buy an eight ball, you could borrow 300 from on the spot uh. i still own eight thousand from <laughs> 1980 fucking two uh, you know, I, I yeah. never thought, I never, the first time I went to Vegas, dog, I knew it wasn't for me. Yeah. I just always felt very insecure in those places, always, still do. Yeah, that's how I felt, Still man. do. And I always had an excuse in my head on why I felt insecure. When I was younger, it was that I wasn't good looking enough and I'm a criminal. These people are all nice people. These are the environment I want to hang with and these people don't want to hang with me. You yeah. Know? And when I got to a certain age, it was I was too old. And then, then now, I'm like, I just feel like a plain out fucking pervert. Yeah. Like, I remember being 25 and seeing, like, 50-year-old guys, 
thinking, why is this fucking guy here? This dude's a pervert. Lee is a sweetheart. I've seen Lee at a bar. No, I can tell he's a gentleman. Lee wants to go to a bar and watch a football game and have a bucket of wings. And he wants to yell maybe a little bit. He doesn't want nobody close to him yelling. He doesn't want nobody. <laughs> Lee will pay $3 extra just to, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, to Lee's sit in the white right. section. Lee yeah. wouldn't do good in Studio 54. Nah. Lee, what's he going to do? Have one drink? People are trying to talk to him. I never liked going to a place where the music was loud. That's where you lose Uncle Joey. Yeah. If I can't talk to you the way we're talking, I don't want to be I'm in lost. this, dog. I'm lost, you know? Yeah, see, that's the same as for me, man. But I would, for some reason, I kept making excuses that made me, like, less than, you know? So, like, oh, it's my fault that I don't fit in here. Instead of just being like, oh, this isn't my environment, you know? Now, why didn't you feel it was your, your environment? Where I you, just felt like you, you feel said. you older? No, I felt like, uh, you know, like these people were rich or these people were better than me or these people, you know, I'm... You know, I'm kind of a a, a a bit of a miscreant. You know, I grew up on the other side of the tracks and these people. But they don't know it. Like, that's the thing I always thought. Because my, my whole thing comes from, like, I've always been chubby and short. short. You're, like, a tall, in-shape, good-looking dude. I look at you, and I think there's nothing wrong in his life at all. Like, oh. there's no way he's self-conscious about anything. Well... I guess now, we're both you, wrong, man. I look at you and I think this guy's fucking what environment, got it all. What you environment know? do you feel comfortable in? Just a more real environment, a more just calm, uh, uh, just a, a, an ten people, fifty people, a hundred people. Yeah, as long, as, yeah, I can, I can feel okay in ten, fifty. When it gets to, to be a little more than that, it's, sometimes it's just too much. But when the music's loud and I can't communicate with people, then that's where I start to feel uncomfortable. That's my end. That's my fault. But I kept going back. I kept thinking there was something wrong with me, that the environment was okay. But it wasn't, man. And that's what happened that night. I went to this club. And uh, they had a party for my friend's fashion line. And then I got in this taxi after this girl gets in with me. I left early because I was going to be on Opie and Jim Norton. This is when Opie and Jim were still together. And uh, this beautiful girl gets in the taxi with me, this Asian girl. And she just started talking about the night. She said that she had fun at the party, but that her boyfriend wasn't in town. Then she goes, her boyfriend's never in town. Then she's like, what happens in taxis stays in taxis, right? That's what she said. So I'm thinking, fuck yeah, you know, like, she wants me to make a move on her. So I make a move, shut me down. And I don't know if that's what made me feel weird after that or whatever, but the taxi dropped her off after that. And, uh... And then it was just me and the driver, bro. And this dude spoke another language, you know, something fucking fancy, you know, something like a play soccer, you know, like this dude, fucking, you know, like this dude was betting on fucking foreign soccer games on his phone for sure, you know. And uh, he said, I thought he said drugs, dude. And I just said cocaine. That's what I said. And next thing you know, we're in North Harlem. Um, he bought some cocaine for us. He comes back in the car. We're doing cocaine. And then he's like, I got a gift for you. I got a gift, you know? And I thought it was going to be, you know, I grew up in like a troubled area. I thought it was going to be his dick, you know? Like, I'm, you know, that's what I was expecting anyway. And uh, and then a hook, a prostitute knocks on the door, you know? This lady gets in. And I think it was a man, honestly, in hindsight. She had these big sunglasses on. Kind of a man's face that was under the sunglasses. You have cocktails in you at this point? Yeah, had a couple tequilas, dude. And uh, so now we're partying, bro. Me, him, and me and the driver were first partying for about an hour. Dude, I got so high, I remember thinking, where is the driver? That's how fucking high I was. <laughs> and he was sitting next to me doing cocaine. <laughs> yeah, at what point does this become not a taxi cab ride? Like, when does the meter get turned off? Like, this Oh, is the meter's weird... going, bro. The meter's at about 270, bro. Uh, no. So he's got to fucking be positive because I'm paying for this experience, bro. <laughs> so then, dude. This hooker gets in. She had, she had kind of long hair, huge sunglasses, covered about sixty percent of her face, and the forty percent of her face you you could see to me looked like a man's face, right? Like I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just like if I were on a game show and it was like guess forty percent of this person's face, I would have guessed man first, right? You know what I'm saying? Like look like a man's face, you know? Or it looked like a woman had just shaved recently. That's what it looked like, you know. Oh. So anyway, we're all oh. doing, we're all we're all getting high together, and the hooker starts making advances towards me. Bro, this sounds ridiculous. <laughs> and I got out of the car, man. I felt uncomfortable, dude. <laughs> so then, dude, you like slide. You don't understand. Up. In my world, I'm thinking 
You're a Louisiana boy in fucking Harlem. No shit do you feel out of place. <laughs> I feel out of place there, but no. I always felt comfortable in North Harlem. Yeah. Right, that's, I know that neighborhood where you're at. You know what I'm saying? You're not in the Bronx yet. Right? You're not in the yeah, Bronx. Yeah, I don't know yet. where we're at. Oh, yeah, it doesn't matter. You're, <laughs> I don't know where we're at. Dude. Was it dark? It was a dark Dark, that's all that matters, yeah. You ain't having a good time if you're not in a dark neighborhood on oh, one part of the night. I was raising one. I know when I'm oh, back. Oh, my God. You know, I know when I'm back. Bro. Now, what time is all this going down? It's about 3.30. All right, so what so time? Late. So you walk out of the cab. Where are you now? You getting another cab? No, I'm in the street. Luigi comes out after me. That's the dude I was partying with the driver. <sighs> and dude, you know what's crazy is he had even one of the lights on the taxi wouldn't go off, and he made like this little paper mache thing and put it over the light, bro. Like this dude was. I mean, I don't think he was homosexual, but this dude was about the most romantic fucking cab driver I've ever spent time with, dude. And dude, it was more romantic in that taxi than it was at your fucking Airbnb, <laughs> bro. That's the saddest part. <laughs> So, dude, I get out. He comes out after me. <laughs> he made me give him 100 bucks, right? And I gave him the 100 because I was a little scared at this point. And I'm thinking he's going to pay the hooker and she'll go. But then I look back over there a couple minutes later, a minute later. Um, and they're kissing on each other's necks. He's spending my 100 with this hooker, dude. He fucking just got this 100 out of me, bro. <laughs> Wait, so your taxi driver bullied you into buying him a hooker? <laughs> no. He owed him money anyway. But right away, he took the money. Luigi took the money and said, hold on five minutes. And invested Let me go get, tw- yeah. me go get $20 worth off this hooker. He took that money and reinvested it in the neighborhood. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And look, I respect hookers, man. Like, you know, I've been through some tough nights, man. Not in fucking North Harlem. <laughs> yeah, right, but still, man. I don't give a fuck. What you well, here's, I respect women that are out there if they got to be out there selling their bodies. No, I, I don't have nothing right. against that. I know you don't. But in North Harlem, you ain't getting into nothing good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you understand true. me? You keep saying North Harlem. Are there Harlem? Different parts I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> like East Harlem. Listen, okay? all I know it is North, I used to go to Harlem to buy coke, and I'd see women out there. And, dog, let me tell you something. It's an illusion. Yeah. It's an illusion. First of all, four out of ten of them got bigger dicks than you. Oh, damn. Lady. Four? Four out of ten of those chicks. <laughs> we in, don't like those In odds. those days. It was, you got to remember, up in Harlem in those days, the Bronx, it was open fucking corral. And then the 90s, the Russians came. Oh, yeah. And I never saw it, but I had friends tell me, you go to Queens, and there'd be six-foot Russian blondes with leopard miniskirts. That you give them three hundred just to eat the assholes. They were that hot, wow. like hot, banging, banging. Like they took over, so all the other ones, the crack hoes, disappeared. Yeah, all that, you know. But in those days, even when I was, when I got in trouble with my buddy, you know, Dodger, and we were going over there, those hookers, yeah, those city rat oh, hookers in those days. You had a that that takes a certain nerve. Yeah, a lot of them work at the Popeyes during the daytime. No, they don't fighting. work. They they're at the clinic in really? the daytime, oh, getting blood transfusions. Dude, we used to have this lady Victoria, Miss Victoria, in our neighborhood, bro. You could pull up, bro. You could eat her ass for like forty bucks, right? She'd sit in your car window, dude. Just basically put her ass in your fucking car window, like a fucking to go box, you know. You could if you had somebody driving, you could even have them drive the block. And she would just sit in there like a little side item, bro. But so this dude, get Luigi, I give him the 100. He gets back in the car. They're making out. I'm kind of pissed, dude. But I don't want to bring that negative energy back into the car. <laughs> right? So I deal with my feelings out in the street for a minute, kind of process through that. Why that, don't you want to bring negative feelings back into the car? Just because I'm already really extremely high, man. I'm under the influence of cocaine. Um, it's almost 4 a.m. Uh, and I don't know these people that well. And I still need to get home. And for some reason at this point, I feel like Luigi is responsible to get me home, right? So I get back in the front seat, right? And they're hooking up in the back, a little blowjob. Like, it's getting it's getting wild, you know? Uh, and I want to still do cocaine, you know, so I'm, but I don't want to interrupt them, dude. So I remember trying to quietly do cocaine in the front seat, just like, like, <laughs> like, like, like the softest little inhale you could do. Were bro. you watching like, them at any point? Oh, oh, you yeah, listen? some dude. I was definitely listening hard. You know? <laughs> Did you stink? I mean, uh, no, it's I like don't like cologne. Like, dude. All you smell is like cologne. Like when you walk in the middle of them, all you smell is like fucking. Heavy duty perfume. 
cover yeah, it up. I'm trying to remember. She smelled like violence to me in tattoos. She was a <laughs> tough lady or man. I mean, I thought she was a man. The face looked like a man's face to me, but she had big sunglasses on. She could have been one of those taller Vietnamese people that kind of look black at night, you know? <laughs> uh so we're in there, and uh, now I'm in the car, and I'm trying to quietly do cocaine, dude. Like, just like a fucking, just like a, like just doing it in, like an installment. It's like I had a bump on layaway. Why do you, you know, have to just the fucking, light? They're back there fucking. Why can't you just? Because there's something wrong with me where I sacrifice other people. Like, I just feel like I got to be considerate at all times. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt them, dude. I guess. I don't know, man. I was fucked up, bro. So they're partying. At one point, I remember even turning my head back and just dumping cocaine quietly into the top of my nose like this. <laughs> just like, just as quiet as I could be. And a cop goes by, dude. Cop goes by. I get scared. I tell Luigi I'm scared, bro. He don't, he don't give a fuck, dude. This when I realized like, he didn't care about me as much as I cared about him, I guess. And he's like, you drive. You drive. And that's when I got in the driver's seat. And I drove, man. I drove us. I drove us about a mile and a half, dude. I don't even know where I was, dude. And uh, and then I pulled over because a voice in my head, bro. First, a voice in my head is like, dude, at least you're. It was like, you're out here, bro. You're high. You know, you're doing cocaine. Uh, but at least you're making money, you know? <laughs> like I was working. Like I was a cab driver. And that's when, like, dude, my brain's fucked up. Like this ain't my cab. You know, I got to pay for this. And then my brain was like, you don't have a commercial driver's license. And that's what got me to pull over, dude. That technicality that if a cop stopped me that I wouldn't have one. And I pulled over. I got another taxi. Got back to my hotel room. Finished doing my cocaine. And I had to be on Opie and Jim Norton that morning. And it's 5.30 now, dude. I took three showers, bro, in ten minutes. Right? I have one question. Yeah. Did you pay Luigi or did you just kind of get out and just get into another camp? <clears throat> we ended up in a little bit of an argument at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I left $100 on the car seat. <laughs> And yelled adios at him really loud, bro. I don't even know if he spoke Spanish, dude. I'm just screaming adios at him, <laughs> him and this fucking hooker who had the smallest tits I've ever seen, bro. Look like a man's chest. But uh, then I go to Opie and Jim, dude, and the other guest for the day is Daryl Strawberry. And I could not even feel my face, dude. I couldn't even think. Uh and that's when I was like, this is a bad look, you know? I couldn't even talk. They were asking me questions, dude, and I'm just, I couldn't even, like, the, I, I couldn't feel my face. I could all my thoughts was coming out of my neck. Like, I was running on, on neck thoughts, dude. I'm fucking thinking with my neck, bro. So I fucking sat there for three hours, bro. Just roasting. Now I know how you feel, kind of late. I just sat there just, just boiling in my own fucking drug-induced bullshit. And, uh, and then I fucking left, bro. And I, I'm halfway there. Halfway on the walk over there, I realized I had on fucking sweatpants with jeans over them, bro. <laughs> Horrible. That's like a catheter outfit. Like, if you may, might be getting a catheter and you might have to stay overnight. Ah. Uh, Feel while I'm sitting here because I'm like you know, this people like Lee that he's a sweetheart. I wish to God Lee never does a drug. He would never do a drug. Uh, but for some people, some experience is like that experience. Yeah. To wake up on Opie because you basically woke up on Opie and Jimmy, and you're coming down off the juice. You're not paranoid, but you can't talk either. You're in that oh, stage. I was scared. Of, yeah, you're in that stage of fucking. Uh, why the fuck am I even here? It's horrible. Yeah, I'm sitting here going. I remember doing that ten thousand times. Oh, not not you know being in a cab with a hooker, but I when you said Harlem. When I was growing up, I had a friend and he had a girlfriend. He was about seven years older than me. He's dead now. God rest his soul. But he had a girlfriend dog who was fucking banging. Wow. And I saw her naked once when I was like 18. That shit stayed with me. Ooh. That was jerk off material for like six months. Mm. I go ahead, I disappear, I do my thing. I go to Colorado, I do a little time. I'm back in Jersey in 90 fucking three. And I reconnect with a friend of mine. 
And he goes, what are you doing tonight? I go, nothing. What do you want to do? He goes, let's go, let's go out. Meet me at Teaneck at this, I forget the name of the place. It's a popular place for that age group, you know. And I went there and met him about T-neck? seven. Teaneck? Yeah, Teaneck, Tenafly. Is it Teaneck, Teaneck. It's a artist cafe, something like that. Mm-hmm. Something like very chic, so a lot of kids from my neighborhood thought, you know, as they got older, they went there for a few drinks. I was, at this time, I'm 31 years old. I'm doing comedy. I'm doing comedy already. Uh, uh, I'm not getting nowhere with it. You know what I'm saying? I'm not knocking down no doors and shit, but I'm doing fucking comedy. And I hook up with them, and at the time, I'm a fucking fiend, you know. It's 35 a gram. On 178th Street, Damn. 25 if you want to clean. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> I go in there and get three right off the bat, Jack. <laughs> Bam! This shit was glass. What that al- is all on aluminum foil, and they give you a blast when you walked in. Oh, that's beautiful. That, you, they sat you down. They go, "What do you want to do?" And you go, "I don't know. Let me taste the 35." And then, "What do you want to do? You want to taste the 25?" And I, you go there, and then you just they walk you out to the door, and you'd walk back to your car, and the cops were paid for, and you. It puts you back out on, uh, not Amsterdam, but one of those streets under the bridge. Yeah. And then, rule number one, you took the Lincoln Tunnel back. Go into it. Get a fucking hot dog. Roll a joint. These idiots that would get back on the George Washington Bridge, they had spotters. Right. They just seen you go over. They'd pull you over, and now they confiscate your fucking car. You have to give it to them, because if not, they're going to bring the dog, and they're going to get you anyway. Right. So don't fuck with them. Damn. You know what I'm saying? It was hardcore. Damn. So... I went over there first. That was my that was my automatic first stop of the night, and I had it down to a science in those days. Sometimes I'd walk over and take the bus back. Same difference. What were we gonna say? You'd be high on that bus, though, huh? No, I wouldn't do. Oh yeah, oh, you wait till you get home. No, I'd do that little blast that he'd give me, and I, by the time I got to the bus, I'd be coming down like a little bit, like. But how Theo was saying that he felt uncomfortable there his first time. Do you remember how you felt the first couple times you went there before you, it became old hat? Like, were you freaked out, or were you was it already at that point? Since my mom had a dry cleaner in the Bronx. Probably in your system. And, yes, and my mom had a bar in Union City, and my mom had a bar in Harlem at a young age. It's in my system. Yeah. I had a friend of mine take me over once to the city, and when I got back in the car, he goes, it's amazing how you blended right in. Hmm. He goes, you knew the walk. I knew those first, you know, those first 10 years of my life. I lived in New York City. Those first seven years of my life in this country, yeah. I lived in New York City. I went to school in the heart of New York City. Yeah. I went to school on 89th Street, PS 166, from K-1 to fucking third grade. Then I went to Captain <clears throat> School in Jersey. But all that time, I got the patois of the city. Yeah. My mom's action was on 125th. My Santeria action was on 148th. Mm. I knew the fucking city. Yeah. You understand me? Then I got older and I knew George Washington Bridge. I knew the fucking streets. My stepdad shot a dude on 148th Street right oh, there at the Santeria party. I knew the escape route. That's beautiful. I knew where to drop the gun on Riverside Drive. <laughs> I knew that situation. So I, I get the Coke. I go back to Jersey. I meet him. And in those days, dog, I, I'm not a big drinker. But I'm the type of guy, see... I'll call you up and go, what are you doing tonight, Theo? No, let's go get a drink. And on the way there, you go, Joey, I got an audition tomorrow, dog. Don't even start your shit tonight. Theo, yeah. come on, bro. I wouldn't invite you for a drink. I got a joint in my pocket. We go, we have one drink, we have two drinks, we have three drinks. All of a sudden, that chick you used to fuck shows up. And with her friend that sucked my dick in the bathroom that time at El Compadre, right? <laughs> it's 9.30, it's early. <laughs> Theo, let's get a taste. No, bro, I got that big audition on ABC. Fuck it, give, give Theo 10 more minutes. I'll get the chick to buy him another fucking double kamikaze. Then he'll be begging me for a blast. And that's right there. That would break me down. Yeah. I went out with the intention. And you know, how I got a good, like, I'm pretty good. When I tell you, listen, we got to do shit tomorrow. I'm yeah. pretty good about it. Towards the end, I wasn't good at all. I would snort an hour before a fucking audition. Damn. I got thrown out of an audition on Fox <laughs> one time. Towards the end, towards 2006, dog, after the longest shot, I got a little fucking weird. Yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. And one day, I get this audition directly from Fox. Like, they're like, we want you to read for this role. Yeah. You know, it's been done before. The crazy roommate owes the bookie money. 
Right. You know, his mom supports him. He can't get a job, hasn't shaved. And they were looking for Artie Lang. Yeah. All right. And I'll never forget my fucking coked up, ready to quit mind. I said, you know what? They're looking for this guy. I might as well go in there like this guy. So I did something I never did the day before. I stopped shaving. Oh, I thought you glued hair to your face. No, what do you think? I'm fucking half a fucking mook. God, oh. no, dude. We used to glue S- hair to our face to make beards. Pubic mm-hmm. hair, too, during Ugh. Halloween. Stop. Some of it was gray, you know? <laughs> it did. I didn't put gel in my hair. I just put water <laughs> in my hair. And I fucking went in there like, um, like two hours after doing coke. And I went in front of the camera. It was the casting director, me, and a camera, bro. <laughs> And after the first reach, she goes, stop. She goes, I think you better go home. And we're going to make believe this never happened. Really? Yeah. She knew you were high? Yeah. How did she know? She must have been grammed up occasionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could tell. But it was very disrespectful. Yeah. She never said a word. Wow. She never called the agent at the time and said, hey, this kid was fucked up. I hit on, I hit on an Asian lady recently who was casting a casting director, and she told her manager on me. Really? Yeah, I get back home, and he's like, she said you did a pretty good job, but she said you was hitting on her the whole time. Which casting agent? I don't even remember. She's beautiful, though, too. Down uh, down on the south side? On the, oh, on this the is west in, side? Uh, no, this was in uh, out here in Burbank somewhere. Okay. There used to be an Asian girl in an office here <laughs> that was something out of a fucking movie. Yeah. She used to cast on the west side. Hmm. Her and her partner used to have a cat, and the partner was no fucking slouch either. Yeah. I walked in there one day, I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, what's going on with these casting directors? Yeah. I yeah, don't know where she is now, but it's probably the same uh, one. This girl was stunning. I, I didn't mean to hit on her, I was just being a natural man, you know? Like, I can't help it. Like, oh, what, what's offensive? And I wasn't saying anything like, you know, touching my crotch or anything like that, you know? I was probably just, Saying, oh, you look nice today or something like that, you know? Like, I can't help it if I got a little fervor in my voice for a woman. You know, they act like that's a sin out here these days, you know? Oh, you want to bust a nut on a lady? You're a fucking, you know, you're a deviant, you know? You're you're Charles Manson if you want to do that, you know? You know Charles Manson studies Scientologists. He still studies Scientologists. How crazy is that shit? He's a little pussy, dude. I'll beat that dude's ass. <laughs> I swear to God. You let that dude out for one minute in a fucking used car lot, I'll beat that motherfucking dude's ass bro why I'm do you hate joking, Charles Manson dude. so much cause he's a pussy dude he made other people he made hot chicks go out and kill people I mean it's kind of romantic and shit but <laughs> just, at the same time yeah. he's a pussy let me tell you something as a child I read that book and that book fucked me up did it really when I was about 13 when I, after I got left back it really fucked with me because I wasn't left back material I had just gotten caught up in some fucking fantasy world you yeah know? But that teacher, Mr. Kingwell, who was a fucking prick. He left you back? Yeah, he left me back. No, I left myself back. I had summer school, but I went to summer school and I did the same fucking... If you have three misses in summer school, you're done. You're done. I fucking missed three classes over this chick because that's the only time I get together with her. You missed the first three. Joey missed the first three. I was in love, dog. I didn't give a fuck. That young love will get you. And I thought that my dog was going to just say, pass him to the eighth grade. Nah, they held me back. It was fucking brutal. It fucked with me. It fucked with everything I had. So, Mr. Kinglaw is part of uh, every month you had to do a book report for him. Uh-huh. The only problem was it was an oral book report. Uh-huh. So, he would take the book and dissect it. At that time, man, I was so pissed off at myself. Yeah. He was still my English teacher. Even though I got put in Mr. Barone's class. Who, Mr. Barone, I took him to the premiere. Of the of the grudge match. Wow, that's how tight I am with Barone. That's beautiful. No, no, no. Barone was tight, but here was the beauty of it. Me and Barone hated each other in the seventh grade. Like he kept telling me in the hallways, "You better not get left back, because you're gonna get me next year. It's gonna be all over." <laughs> and the, so that fucking uh, last day of school, if you have to go to the eighth grade, you go to the eighth grade. If you have to go to summer school, they just put you in the other seventh grade class. So the whole fucking eight hours, Barone kept busting my balls. It's going to be fun you sitting here all next year. <laughs> I'm going to fail you again. You're going to be in the seventh grade till you're 90. <laughs> because you're going to be driving the other kids to school. and shit. <laughs> <laughs> He would torment me. So he tormented me, dog, for like four or five hours. 
And on the way out of the classroom, I saw his keys were on the desk. And I took his fucking car keys. And I walked home and I threw him in the fucking weed somewhere or some <laughs> shit. <laughs> what a dick. And about an hour later, he pulls up my house with a cab. Where's my fucking keys? Wow. <laughs> and we didn't talk again. And the next day, I got, I got left back. And I was in his classroom, and he never mentioned it wow. ever again. That's pretty cool of him. And after about two months, we became tight because I realized he was a good basketball player and shit. So, how the fuck? How did we end up talking about this shit? We Who had this dude, Mr. Larry. We had this black kid in our school, Mr. Larry. He got held back so long, they just made him a janitor one time in middle school. He was there probably. I remember him being like, he could piss. His trick was he'd come in while you were peeing at the urinal, and he'd piss over you. What? In the urinal. And, uh... And finally, he was in fifth grade for so long, they just made him a janitor. <laughs> I mean, he's probably still, if that school's still open, he's probably still there. Can you imagine only being in the fifth grade and they pull you aside? Listen, we've been talking here. The staff has been talking. It's not going to work out for you. But lucky for you, we have an opening in the janitorial services department. What does that mean? Listen, we'll give you a dollar for every dollar. We'll match it so you can join the Army when you're 30. <laughs> I just love that. That probably means he was at least 16 or something. So that was, what, like seven uh, times going through the fifth grade? Let me tell you something. When yeah, I was beautiful a kid, guy. if you were stupid. Really they, handsome, too. Listen, when I was a kid, if you were stupid, they pulled you aside when you were 16. <laughs> yeah. The teachers at school pull you aside. Like, oh, listen. <laughs> oh, my God. You're wasting your time here. Yeah. When you get to high school, just sign out. Get yeah, a job right. as a mechanic. I yeah. swear to God, teachers were honest in the 70s. Well, that's a better way. Now that they want everybody to push forward. Dude, I remember the first wigger went to our school. I told you guys that before. The first wig of this kid, Brian St. Pierre, went to our school, and he uh, they'd never seen it before, you know, and they thought he was mentally handicapped. They put him in, they made him eat the third lunch, you know, the third lunch, the special lunch where those kids are in there, you know, they make some of their own food and then they eat it, you know, to make them have a, a talent, and uh, <laughs> And he was in there, dude, this wigger. So you'd have like, you know, you have like kids who were really had mental illnesses and, you know, everything, all the DS and everything. And then you'd have fucking Brian St. Pierre wearing a Charlotte Hornets pullover, <laughs> dribbling an invisible basketball all day, bro. Just posting up mental kids in the lunch line, bro. They'd never seen it. They thought he was mentally handicapped just because he wanted to, you know, play with the brothers. Just so, so different times. They had him cook lunch every day still? Like, he didn't say anything? Once a week, they'd have him make some of their own recipes for lunch, you know? It's kind of... It was cool. I mean, we had a good we had a good group of handicapped kids at our school, <laughs> I remember. I'm fucked up, dog. Those stars hit me hard tonight. That's what happens. You know why they hit me hard? Because I trained last week. I didn't eat stars last week. Lee sprayed out of his face, out of the gate, boy. I didn't eat stars boy. last week at all. I sprayed it, but I'm still I'm still, See, you, you still here, bro. You kept eating stars and shit. Fucking them brown. I had transmission you fluid. Took that, I you, no, you didn't. You, you threw the charcoal oh, away. Oh, Jesus. So this saying. is why I have to do everything on Periscope. Well, Thank you know, God for Periscope. Know Lee's fearless, man. I don't see how you do it, Lee. I really don't. He's he, really not the choice does, anymore. I, he does like a little bit. He goes like this in front of the camera. He goes, I'm going to eat some chocolate. He takes a bit like that. He chews and then this this 80 milligram, whatever, he throws this away. <laughs> and he tells people he ate it. And tonight he ate the whole thing, and it was coming through his fucking fingers. You should have seen him. He was gilling out, huh? You know, when you were telling your story, bro, the thing that uh, I was thinking about the most were the, the 200 of those stories that I had that I wish I had the time. I wish I had the fucking time to... And I got 10 that roll around in my head sometimes, <laughs> and one of them would pop up in the middle of the night before I'm about to fall asleep and my whole body shatters, bro. Those are those type of stories, especially when it comes to drugs. Yeah. Especially when it comes to fucking drugs. And you, the next morning you wake up and you're like, that's fucked up. I yeah. gotta get my life together. I gotta call somebody and <laughs> shit. But, you know, 10 days later it happens again. And, you know, and sometimes it's it's sex. Or sometimes it's it's crazy sex. You go to a girl's house with her son, her sister, and her stepfather in the room. Yeah. And everybody's banging, and you're like, what the fuck am I a part of? You know, I just want to watch the, the fucking Nick yeah. game. Wait, 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 wait. Is that a real scenario? Lee, you would be fucking surprised what you bump out into when you're out there. Yeah. Especially when I started to do comedy. You'd be surprised what I'd bump into. And I had you one night talking. My, my body was shaking. Yeah. My body was shaking, telling Legia, just triple tours, just bolder, just, you know, 
the, the, I, I thought life was a certain way when I lived in New Jersey. Oh, yeah, I remember. Boy, was I fucking wrong. I remember trying to fuck this girl on roller skates one time. You ever try to do that, dude? No. At Halloween. Unbelievable, bro. But that was drug-induced. I remember... Never been arrested? Uh, dude, I got arrested in Mississippi one time. We're all high at some house. And they brought a kid. The cops show up, and they brought a kid from downstairs, right? And they said, this kid is here. Everybody's going in for contributing delinquency of a minor. Um... And then you could, but once you got outside, kids were paying and getting out of the thing. They put us in the le- like the slave shackles, you know, the things they put between two legs, you know, and then hook you to the person in front of you. Uh, they put us in that shit, dude, and they, we had to walk downstairs. So it was the dumbest thing ever, bro. It must have taken us 40 minutes to get downstairs in these fucking leg shackles with these two stupid cops. But they brought this kid down, and then later there was a rumor that they were this was this kid this was a stage kid. They were high, they were paying somebody's kid to fucking they would sneak him in the back and put him in people's houses and come down in pajamas and then making money because they're busting everybody in the house because now they got a charge on everybody contributing. Um, what else did I go in before? Nothing, nothing real serious, man. No, God bless you, man. Listen. But that 36, was the thing. I just wanted to get. I did, I just yeah. Part of me was 36, like thirty six. You got a fucking career. You're yeah. on the upswing right now. You know what? You fucked around. You got your dick sucked. I'm not telling you to uh, go get married, but it's time to start watching your back because this is when you're a good-looking guy. Shows are getting developed and written. You could be the number two dude, pick up a check five years, no drama. You know, you already did it. Yeah, I've had so much fun, bro. You know, once you get everything out of the way, this place becomes a complete different animal. Yeah. You know, And, and listen, Lindsay Lohan survived it. Uh, the fucking Hilton kid survived it. Some people don't. Yeah. Some people don't, man. I told you when I walked in here, I'm not, I'm I'm happy about the podcast. I'm happy that I get to see Lee and, and we get high and we talk shit and, and, and he makes a living and I make a living and we sell tickets and, you know, guys like you come on here and people get to hear you. I like doing stand-up. I don't think I could do this shit if I was doing blow. Yeah. There's no fucking way. This this podcast would have been done. It would have fell apart. Lee would have been to Lee wouldn't even have been talking to me no more mm-hmm. at this point. Lee would have gone he left me there four fucking days in a row, you yeah. know. Who's gonna come out of the house? Yeah. Yeah, and that was the thing. I was just like, I just don't I need to take a if this is where I'm kind of ending up once in a while, even once in a while, I just wanna get So nothing stuff. happened after the cab ride after that. That shook you enough. Oh, well, what, seeing Daryl Strawberry is what shook me. The next day. Because he was 13 years sober, and he was like, uh, I mean, this dude was eloquent. He had his life put together. He's a multimillionaire now. And then he was pushing the, the documentary, 30 for 30, the new one with Doc Gooden. But Doc Gooden wouldn't show Doc up. Doc Gooden would, couldn't show up because he's, he's sick. He's all fucked up. Yeah, he's all fucked up. And I know my life isn't their lives, but it made me think. Okay, you just got to monitor what's going on. Because I just, I, yeah, I don't like to, I didn't like to party. I just like to put myself in a crazy situation. Fuck bro. yeah, me too. You know? I was, that's what I was thinking about the whole time you're saying that. I go, yeah. I don't miss the drugs. I miss the six o'clock on a diner or waking up and some girl gives you an Audi to drive home. I, yeah. You're like, what the fuck just happened last night? Yeah. Dude, I was in Louisville one time. I came out of a show. <laughs> they had a big group in a limousine. They invited me to go to an after party with them, right? I was like, I'm only coming if my boy can come. And I'm like, who's your boy? And I'm like, LeCedric. They had a brother nearby, right, wearing this <laughs> Louis Vuitton jacket, dude. Probably about 60% homeless, right? And they're like, that's your boy? And I didn't even talk to this dude, right? I was like, yeah, that's my boy. And like, all right, he can come. So I fucking walk over to him, look him right in the eyes. And I was like, what's up, man? I'm Theo. He's like, LeCedric. And uh, I was like, all right, dude, I told these people you're my friend. You ever been in a limousine? He's like, nah. I was like, all right, come get in with us. Just act like you're my friend, right? Mm-hmm. We're going to a party. He's like, all right, man. So we go in the limo, bro. We're in there, hot chicks, dudes, people fucking. Little Cedric kept saying, we're friends. That's what he kept saying out loud, right? <laughs> kind of fucking not the best actor, bro. But did we get to this house party? It's a nice, cool fucking party, bro. I'm downstairs. I'm in the kitchen. Somebody's making us a drink. I'm talking to somebody. Fuck is six minutes later, right? I hear a fucking somebody scream. I hear a window break, right? 
Somebody comes running down. They said some dude just stole like four purses out of the coat room upstairs and fucking jumped out a window. That would have been me, Doug. And that was I... fucking Le Cedric, bro. Uh, and that was like, but, and everybody there was like crying and pissed. And some girl was like furious because all her tampons were in there or something. I remember she got pissed. She was a tough girl. She was like one of those, uh, what are those people that slide the thing on the ice, she said? Curlers? Curl. <laughs> yeah, she was a curler. And, uh, but I was, in my head, I was like, this is the best fucking night ever. <laughs> No, that's uh. so just shit like that. Where I just love to put life just in precarious situations, man. Would you black out ever? You're never gonna get invited -uh. to another house party huh? ever. Oh, I blacked out one time here in Hollywood, and that scared me. I woke up in my own bed, had no clue how I got there. I'd wet the bed. I mean, I wet the bed till I was about thirty anyway. Cause I, did you too? Not till thirty. Until I was like a teenager. Oh, that's nothing, bro. And uh. And and that was a pretty crazy night. Hold on one second. You were at the bed seat with 13? <sighs> Pro I don't know. Be probably honest. around there, I would guess, yeah. I got to watch you like a hug. Damn. Those people are always arsonists. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Fucking it might have been a little bit, like, uh, maybe not 13, but close, maybe 10, at least. Well, 10 ain't far from 13 if you're talking at least. <laughs> <laughs> probably fucking... <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, I had, a, I had a huge issue with it. It was terrible. Dude, I used to t I used to have those buzzer underwear, bro. They put these underwear on you. When the urine would hit them, a buzzer would go off, oh right? Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not joking. Look them up online. This ain't no joke, bro. So I went to my grandparents. My mother didn't tell them that I had these, right? I'm really hoping these are a real thing and not just a, like a torture device your parents put on you. Not at all, <laughs> They bro. made by themselves. This doctor gave them to us, dude. This dude was a bona fide. Like Google. This dude was a bona fide doctor. So we went there. I got the electric pants on, dude. You know? <laughs> wait, wait. What should I Google? I'm getting my rest. Probably, uh, you know, buzzer underwear for urinators. Uh, I would Google uh, buzzer underwear for urinators. Um, and uh, so then, <laughs> but they didn't tell my grandfather, right? So he fucking, and they had a small house, bro. A little bitty house. So my fucking crotch is just, but like, he he wakes up middle of the night, dude. I'm fucking... <laughs> You're on fire. <laughs> I'm not on fire, but I'm buzzing hard, bro. Because I'd had apple juice, man, and I pissed big on apple juice, dude. I fucking spray out on the AJ. So I'm in there just buzzing, dude. And I didn't oh know. Oh, God. And he came in. They he still didn't... got him? Yeah. Get me a pair, Lee. He didn't, he didn't that's know. That's what I want. Get me a pair. He didn't know I'm... what was going on. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm, that's what... He comes I'm... in. He's scared, How bro. How loud is it? How loud is this? In a little bitty house, you could uh, you could hear it from down. I the just hall. want to wake my wife up in the middle of the night, like twice a week. <laughs> just, I would just do two drops, and you and it goes off. And uh, and so my grandfather's in there, right? And he's all scared and shit. And uh, oh, this would have been terrible when I was a kid. And he's pushing me with a broomstick, dude. He thought I was dead, dude. He didn't know what had happened, and we thought I was possessed or dead. He's pushing me with a broomstick to wake me up, and he was worried because he had one of those heart makers. And uh, he was worried he would get electrocuted. He thought something was happening. He thought the house had short-circuited it or the, or the phone company had fucked up. That's what he thought the phone company had fucked up. So he thinks I'm fucking just laying there buzzing like I was just a fucking miscreant. But he died, man. My grandfather ended up dying. He died. I love people. I love laughing. I love laughing at shit like this. That's, you can't write this shit. I forgot about that. <laughs> write that down. I did, man. <sighs> this has been the best, man. I appreciate you having me on because I've been, I was sick the past two days, man. What was wrong with you? Oh, man. I had adult diarrhea, bro, to be honest. It happens. Those fucking flights. <sighs> You're eating fucking Katrina leftovers still. Oh, yeah. They still got some guys got it in stock. Oh, they're serving fucking crippled pig pussy down there, bro, and oh. I was eating about a handful. They ain't fucking around down there, Jack. Oh. oh, my God. I'm high on those stars because, like I said, I ate fucking transmission fluid and a couple of these moon things. The night I killed the cookies was the night I ate the transmission fluid and the moon thing. And I was home all night with my wife. Oh, my God. I fucking killed those cookies. 
I want some cookies, man. Dude, I ate half of a pie cookie one time. I never had one. This is a couple years ago. I invited this casting director, right, out to a comedy show. So she comes, but the comedy show was the next night. I had the nights wrong. So I felt bad, and she was cute. And I was like, well, at least I'll get her dinner because she came all this way. I didn't want to be like a, you know, just like a, you say, like a mook, you know. So buy this lady dinner. We're sitting there eating dinner. She gave me a pot cookie. And I got high, man. I'd never had one. And I didn't know how we knew each other. <laughs> and it was like a nice restaurant. And I started thinking that this was like my girlfriend, you know. I was like, fuck, dude. I'm the worst. And uh, I tried to make a move on her by the cab stand, dude. And she's like, what the fuck are you doing, you know. And uh, she wasn't my girlfriend, man. And uh, anyway, that was it. That was it, dude. But uh, yeah, yeah, stuff's dangerously. I think that's what I'm getting at here. I thought it was a buzzer, like a like a vibrating. No, it's like a like a. It makes an old uh, sound. Uh, I still can't get over. You got the car, drove an hour and a half to go to an apartment. When Dude, yeah, me, yeah, Airbnb is not for anyone. When, That's you, a, when you told me that, way, I, I was like, I can't. I, this is a horror show. This is so. What happened? What are you mad at Airbnb for? Yeah, you should host a romantic getaway. <laughs> this shit is I'm, not, like, I'm not mad at Airbnb. It's just it's a weird. It was just weird. It was just this person's apartment, and like her stuff was there, and it was just her bed. Like I was like, we should bring sheets. I was just it was just not you brought your own sheets I wanted to but we didn't <laughs> she's like no this is what they do they make money doing this this is all they have at the it's an, an industry well, I don't know but it's an it, industry yeah I don't I don't like I like hotels so from now I just said from now on we'll do hotels yeah man splurge man throw the extra nine dollars out there and get a fucking hotel and he's, from he's young he knows all the no, sites no I've been to hotels he knows how to flamingo oh, he'll get a yeah. he'll get 90% off fucking hotels no, oh well, you should you be know, up him Dean Del Rey they know how to get a hotel room I don't know how to do none of that people shit people try to be like I don't know it's it's cool. It's like you get to be as part of the community. It was right on the beach, which was nice. But oh was wow, like, I didn't know that. But it, like it was cool. But I'd still rather be in a hotel on the freeway. It's just I don't know. It, like even though I know more people probably are on those sheets, to be honest. And the sheets made you nervous. Yeah, I do. You cooked in their silverware and ever, shit. Ever, yeah. No, I didn't. Cook, I didn't. Cook, I didn't cook with none of their silverware, but. Ever since I've been with him, I just get unlucky. I've never had I never had skin issues, and now I get styes if I look at a hot tub. <laughs> so, so it's yeah, good. yeah. Trust me. And about that, I got a call. Make it His ear is swollen. He Dude, that's why it. I sleep on my stomach. I was trying. I was you sleep on your stomach. I do. Like a fucking dead animal. <laughs> yeah, of course. Like an armadillo. Yeah, or on my side. I'm or mostly either on my stomach or my side. Jesus but Christ! I, do I was, your arms touch the ground? Yeah, of course. How do you even do that, bro? <laughs> you have no idea, dog. Right? Who sleeps Listen. on their stomach face down? No, I sleep, yeah. Oh, I, face to the side. I, I have pillows, yeah. Oh, face to the side. Jesus talking? Christ, I thought you slept face down. You think I have like a, a massage table in my bedroom? And I, I just don't sleep. Know, bro. <laughs> no, but. I just try to. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're a fucking unreal Lee. I forget what we were talking about. They should have dolls. They should have the Lee Syed dolls, bro. They're indestructible, dude. Oh, yeah, it, was, it was just Airbnb. It was not. I would. It's a hotel. It just. It was just. I get it in like places where you want to rent a cabin or something was like that. Was it a spare bedroom or was it? We had personal a full apartment. Bedroom. We had a full apartment. It was her personal bedroom, though. Yes. Okay. See, that's disgusting. Yeah. All that people <laughs> bang in my bed and come on my yeah. headboard and shit. People spraying Listen, out. Know, oh yeah, we, we disrespected. We went to we we, we disrespected that bed. Let me tell it, you something. You just come on the headboard and rub it in like fucking <laughs> lemon. What's that joy? What's that shit you polish wood with? That's, yeah. Palm you know, olive. They, old uh, old English. Old whatever. English. Uh, yeah. They come <laughs> back. They gotta sleep with that old DNA of Diaz lurking over your head and shit. Yeah, I did. old English. <laughs> That's a liquor, isn't it? That's a malt liquor. That's why we left. I was. I just. I didn't. It was gonna rain. There was gonna be fireworks, so we were gonna stay if there was gonna be fireworks. But then it was raining, and it was just like this person's. It was like her college apartment, kind of. <laughs> it was like everything that had was like someone else went to IKEA. 
and they stand out at a dorm at fucking pretty much Cal State Long Beach. It was not good. It was not good. But my 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 girlfriend is <laughs> young and but she she no she the activities were great and she just ha- isn't making a lot of money yet. So uh, did she have a good time? Oh yeah, we had a good time. The activities are great, dude. Well, that fucking go. dude. She had a good time, Lee. That's what counts. Yeah, oh yeah, of course. And we had a great time. We have a great time together. It's just that's love, man. I'm I'm the the old uh, weird one who just wants to be in hotels. But um, now, do you try to act not older on your girlfriend if she's younger? That's one thing I've noticed. Well, I'm not I'm that much. I'm only two years older. Oh, that's not bad. That's man. not weird. Um, that's not bad. But we, people should go to Museum Stoned more. It's fun. It's like that. Have you been to the Queen Mary? No, I've been to the other place, the museum down there, the fucking Zoolandio. The aquarium? The water, yeah, it's cool down there. Yeah, the aquarium was fun as fuck, too. Yeah. It's a nice time. It's beautiful down there. It really is. They redid Long Beach. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just not a vacation resort, Lee. And we had the best Mexican food I've had in California. That's the first thing I said to you that afternoon. I go, make sure you get the Mexican food, but don't get a fucking chain. Oh boy, but Simon Rex is uh, we, going down there with him a couple days. You know him, Simon Rex? Dirt nasty? No, no, no. Oh, you gotta meet him. He's great, bro. So funny. No, it's uh, it's great to fucking get sober, man. Yeah, it's cleared it's my great head up to a little. Get sober. Listen, man, I don't give a fuck what anybody tells you. And the quicker you catch yourself, the better off it is, you know. Yeah. And it might take you a year to get sober, but. It's so good when you do. Do you feel better? Five more. What's the difference right now that you feel? Yeah, I mean, I feel like no reefer, no sleeping <clears throat> pills. No, no, nothing. No nothing. Just straight up water. Maybe some. I'll, I'll hit up a Cialis five milligram. You know, if I'm trying to party a little. You know, if I'm trying to treat a lady to an evening or something. <laughs> but uh, you know, I'll drop nine dollars on that. I got a dude that you know. <laughs> when did that start happening? What? The Cialis 5 milligram? Oh, yeah. I throw that just because, look, dude, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I can be Michael Jordan, but if I could have Scottie Pippen next to me, bro, I'll do it, you know? Like, there's no point <laughs> not having him in the ring with you, you know? <laughs> you know, you don't show, you You know, you got to bring a you, you got to bring a knife to a bun fight, oh you know God, what I'm I, saying? I am so petrified to eat one of those things. Oh, you got to throw, I'll throw, dude, I'll take, I'll put one of those in my butt, dude. They go quick to your cock then, dude. What is this fucking... What? In the last week, we've had somebody who put what did she put in her asshole? Coke, ecstasy, ecstasy. Oh, oh yeah, Maybe. boofing. These kids are boofing where they blow cocaine in each other's butts. What? I read about that. That's a Colorado thing. What do they do? They put cocaine in the end of a straw, and then they put the other they put the other end into somebody's butt, and then they blow it in there. It's I called that, boofing. I did that twenty five fucking oh. years ago. I invented that one. With a dollar bill, you boof with a dollar bill. You get the hepatitis C attached to the dollar bill and shit. If I don't have hepatitis C, I ain't got nothing. You know what I'm saying? Amen, bro. From all those fucking dollar bills and snorting that shit. Mm. Hysterical. Oh, my God. What the fuck? So, yeah, I hit a sabbatical, man, but I hit a sabbatical, so that's where I'm at, you know? But it's chill. I just feel what I feel. I feel... Because I, I just got a lot on my plate right now. And at least each time I can show up for it, you know? It's like every day I know I can do what's going, what's required of me, you know? Because my mind already tries to beat me up a lot. My mind, you know, first thing out of the gate, my mind is like, you fag, you know, you nigga. Sometimes my mind calls me a nigga even, you know? Like, Jesus Christ, I guess my own brain using the N-word, you know? And it's just like, that stuff's just tantalizing, you know, sometimes. So... So at least I know each day when I'm sober, it's like or if I haven't been drinking or partying, then I'm able to get up and, like, battle my own demons and go at the day head on, you know? And I still, I got enough war stories, and now I'm able to think out my war stories a little bit better. Because sometimes I was too busy making new stories to even think about the old ones. So now I'm able to look through the old ones and be like, oh, this could be a good story. And I can share those stories, so I feel like my, my stand-up has gotten better, you know? I put it together a new hour in the past year. You ready to shoot another special? I'm ready, man. You feel good about it? Oh, I feel good, dude. Where would you shoot this time? This time I would do Chicago or I would do here in L.A. I think because I got enough friends that understand me, you know? And it might be delusional. Otherwise, I would do Dallas. Dallas, bro. I love those people. They're fucking everything, dude. Where do you work in Dallas? The Improv? Yeah, I work the Improv. But I worked the one out in... uh, Arlington. Yeah. Addison. Addison. Yeah. 
I worked at Addison. That was one of my favorite clubs. It man. is a great club, isn't it? One of my favorite. But the hotel used to be 50 yards away. Now they switched to that, I heard. The one I stayed at was really close. You could walk to I it? I could walk. How many minutes? Literally, not even joking, two and a half minutes. Maybe mm -hmm. less. Then they put you back at that hotel. They said they took you out of this. So I was like, nah. Oh, they did take you out for a little while. The first time I went, they had me stay at some other place down the street. And they had to drive down there or some shit. Yeah. Fuck that. Yeah, I don't do that. I don't do that shit, man. But yeah, man, I had some other crazy... I mean, I remember one night, body slamming a bunch of hookers dressed up like a fucking Genghis Khan doing... Get Korean hookers and... Uh, one of the last times I saw you, you had you gone out one night, you went to the apartment, and you were gacked up, and you called the chick, and they sent you the wrong chick. Oh, yeah. Some lady had a, uh, a, uh, what is it, uh, oh, some lady with a mole, had a big mole, and I set her up with my buddy's a dermatologist. I don't even know how to answer that. <laughs> yeah, but you know, pro hookers and stuff were never really my deal. I mean, my deal was just I would just want to party and create stories, you know? Like, I never got into the really that. I mean, that guy brought the hooker into the taxi, you know? That's Luigi's deal. That's his life. It was nice of him because I think he was trying to be a friend to me, but, you know, I didn't want, I didn't need that. You know, I was just looking to party. It's really weird when you live a certain lifestyle. You come to a point one night when you go, you know what, I can't do this no more because eventually something bad is going to happen. Luigi could have stabbed me. Yeah. The hooker could have slipped my throat while I was putting my neck back to put coke in my nose. A yeah. fucking thousand things could go wrong. You know, from experience, man, now, if I could do it again, I always minded my business. Listen, I went into those neighborhoods late at night. I think about it and my fucking skin like just wants to shake like a spirit touch me. Like, yeah. It's the weirdest thing. Like I remember being at a bar in like Fort Lee, New Jersey and knowing that the place is going to close at 3. We got to make it over at 3 in the morning. But when you get to that place, the place is closed. So now you got to get to the Bronx. Are you fucking kidding me? Now you gotta cross a bridge and another bridge with coke in your fucking car. Don't take they're confiscating that car and you're doing seven and a half years somewhere. Yeah. And you're still doing it. Yeah. And you're still going to that bad neighborhood. And that's all you need is for a cop to see a, a hooker walk towards your car and her talking to you, you're getting pulled over. Yeah. It's that easy. They see a woman eighteen inches from your car, you're getting fucking pulled over. Unless you miss Victoria, dude, who just drop her ass into your passenger seat, dude. That lady would hang out the side of your car. I mean, that was, I mean, that's basically the, uh, what's that food place where you go and they run out to your car and set the thing on the tray on the side? Sonic? Sonic, bro. That's basically the Sonic of hookers, that lady. Well, Tony, better than a Monday, the first Monday of the new year. Look at you and shit. Hey, man, man. Good to be here, man. Good to have you. Happy New Year. Ha! Happy New Year. Good job. Victoria, I wonder what she's up to now. Who's Victoria? The hooker. What hooker? That lady would drop her ass in your car for... 16, 18 bucks, probably. I stopped by my old neighborhood the other day, actually. I'll tell you about that next time. How you feeling, Lee? How you feeling? I'm feeling uh. So the star stayed in you. The chocolates came out. Stuff. Yeah, some of well, so I ate, I also ate the first half of the chocolate bar, so it was like something. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Some parts of something stayed in me. Whatever's in there's working. Unreal. Oh my god. Uh, it's on fucking Periscope. That's the fucking craziest thing. <laughs>
Uh, you, you got the whole thing? I pretty, you know, you always do great. I, I, I thought to yourself, oh, he bought four bars. He trained last week like I, a soldier. But as it was happening, I go, I should have known. I should have known. I, I had that feeling like Ronda Rousey when she was standing next to the referee. I should have known this was a hoax. Listen, I mean, I mean, no disrespect. I know a lot of great people who make a lot of great edibles. Chocolate doesn't really ever sit well in my stomach. It's weird. Wow. I'm a chubby dude who just chocolate is not, yeah. not, not in it for me. You ain't no chocolate guy. I'm going to remember that. No, sir. How many weeks a month are you traveling now? Probably 20 weeks. I do like 20 weeks on the road, and I spend time with my family. Too. I do three weeks at home during the year. Um, and then I, I'm doing enough work in town where it's good to be home, you know? It's like I can make, you know, I can make decent money just even staying in the city. You go out every night during the week? Five nights a week, I'd say I get up. Damn. Damn. <clears throat> Actually, I'll probably get up six, dude, honestly. I try to take one off, though, just to make sure that I'm able to know what I'm doing when I get to the club, you know? If I'm in training, I want to be out six nights a week and get six sets. If I'm fucking around, I like to do four. Yeah. I'll go out one night and bang two just so I'm out three nights and I can stay Friday night with my family, leave it open. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you mean on the road? Yeah, I have to go out twice a month, man. Yeah, twice a month. That's what I like to do. Twice a month is the most I could do. Six nights. Let's do this shit. Do this shit. Do this shit. Oh, shit. Lee Sciatico. Look at you. With a new shirt on. What'd you do with the old shirt? It's not bad. I, it's, uh, it's in the trunk of my car. I just couldn't. I just didn't want to wear a stinky shirt. But, oh, my God. That was fucking... Like you, and you just eat them like they're nothing, which is the weirdest part to me. There's no, Beautiful. there's no fucking state of mind, like. There's no state of mind, but p- things have taste. <coughs> it's chocolate. It's chocolate. I don't taste nothing. I was thinking about it the other day. Mushrooms have shit on them, and he's just told yeah, me to eat them. Yeah, not all of them. Oh yeah, they do. Only the, the good ones. The ones I give you, I clean off for you. You don't clean nothing off. Yes, Come I on, do. I, I personally. Clean the fucking mushrooms off of you. Why would I lie? Before you came in, I was telling Lee that, you know what, man? I really like the holidays. But those five days afterward, just really rough on me, man. Yeah. I just want New Year's to fucking come and go. I had a nice time in New Year's. I'm happy Joe had me open for him down at the Orpheum with Tony Hinchcliffe. Nice fucking people. You wow. Know, we did the show and got the fuck out of there. Nobody hung out, nothing. But, uh, you know, I was home by a quarter to 12. That's beautiful. Bam, nobody got their feelings hurt. My wife was out, you know. But that's it. I, I'm not doing it no more. I've done enough of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like 25 years. I've done probably fucking 20 years of uh, New Year's. That's it, man. I've bombed hard on fucking New Year's. New guys. Year's is hard. New Year's is hard. I've bombed fucking hard. One of the hardest bombs of my life was Miami Improv, where I was fucking kicking ass as a feature act. Yeah. New Year's, like, 99. Oh, did I eat a bag of shit in front of <laughs> Angel Salazar. Oh, really? Oh, boy. I saw him at a diner in New York not long ago. How bad does he look? Dude, I swear to God, Joey, I'm walking with Sarah Tiana. You know her, Yeah. Right? And there's a guy sitting in the diner by himself. It's 2.30 in the morning. We've been at the, at the comedy clubs and stuff. We're going to eat. And I'd never met Angel in my life. I'd only heard stories about him, right? And I'd seen a couple pictures. And I was like, I think that's Angel Salazar. He's drinking a glass of wine in a shitty diner. And we go in, dude, and it was him. And we sat there and talked to him for a while. He tried to fuck Sarah a little bit, oh, yeah. which I respected. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, How and are that you? was it. What's your name? Yeah. <laughs> you want to go into the low with me? <laughs> it was cool to see him, man, because I only heard stories. He works in percentages. <clears throat> he's a, he's an interesting fucking fellow. You know what, man? He gave me a lot of encouragement early on. You know, I can't lie. To you. He's a good dude in that way. When I got to meet him. It was, I, I, I appreciated what he had done. I, I just, that was a little too fast for me. He was rocking and rolling, Jack. Yeah, he, part, he used to party hard. That's what I'm He hearing. goes hard. And I was going hard at the time. Wow. I was going, wow. This guy goes fucking hard. 
like El Paso. We get to El Paso. It was Tuesday through Saturday night. Let me tell you something. As soon as I got down there, there was somebody waiting for me with a chunk that just got over a border in somebody's shoe. <laughs> that first night, Lee, I Smell get, like a size 10, huh? I get fucking lit up. This shit was fucking tremendous, you know. And from there on, every night, there was somebody at the club who had something. It's El Paso, bro. When he would come to town, the phone at the condo would start ringing the night before. Wow. People, is Angel there yet? People wanted to take him out. And that Scarface thing, people will be, when he's 80 in a funeral, in a in an old man's home, every day somebody will be taking him out, taking pictures of him, check it out. Yeah. Buying him lunch, bringing him clothes. It's amazing. People fell in love with that character hard. It just goes to show you. He still sells tickets. He's not selling out. Right. But he still sells tickets. He's not fucking Michael Jackson. Right. But he still sells 100 tickets a show. Doesn't yeah. matter. He takes pictures. People go there, look at him. It's 30 fucking years later. That was 30 goddamn years ago, right? That's amazing. 83? Well, yeah. 83, 90, boom, boom, yeah. That's amazing. Lee was born in 94, right? 88. 88, uh -huh. 94. Who gives a Frenchman's fuck? You know what I'm saying, Lee? Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Lee, bro. Unbelievable. I'm just happy to see you alive every time I come back in here, man. And always boost my spirits to know you're still going. You know? We ain't going nowhere. I know. He's we ain't going nowhere. Indestructible. Lee. We got to take Lee for a ride and have a little talk with him and shit. And kick him out the car and make him walk home and stuff. <laughs> Meet a hooker. And his name is... Uh, <clears throat> Luigi in a car. We need to scare Lee a little bit at night. Lee's never really had fun. Yeah, we need to get you out in one of the neighborhoods one night, dude. Get you in a little clan outfit. Sure. Take him out in one of the neighborhoods. It's going to go up in the rain right now. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm joking, bro. You, I, don't know if you, you, I don't think you'd make a good clansman, Lee. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you would. He's Jewish. Yeah, you could claim you could cross over though, because you have to be Christian first to be a clansman. You probably do. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like kind of you just can't be you ha can't be Jewish. Yeah, I know yeah. that. <laughs> They'll be like, "Hey, what are you talking about?" <laughs> what do you want to do this year, man? As a comic, this year, man, I want to get it. This I want to get this other special. I got my new album that's going to come out soon. We just just uh just locked it actually about three days ago called 30 pound bag of hamster bones uh and so i'm excited about that <laughs> um and what else man we got a couple of great shows that we're pitching so i'm excited about that i wouldn't mind meeting a girl maybe falling in love you know or at least being an honorable boyfriend you know i don't know if i've ever been that in my life dude you know i was out there you know licking pussy after dark you know out there in the streets and just you know just tasting the flavors of the universe you know now that you quit drinking it's a different game out there huh? it's not that easy to lure them back oh no girls want you more now do they oh i think in a heartbeat yeah i've had Why? more offers these days for like i've just had more offers i think just because i'm because you look like you do wait like i don't like <laughs> no, because i'm clear if I, if I go sober it's not like people are gonna be like oh lee i want to suck your dick like, <laughs> well, no they might lee i don't think so you know, bro, they might. Look, I didn't think, I, you know, I've never thought I was uh, very handsome, Lee, if that makes you feel any better. You're stunning, sir. No, well, it's nice of you to say. But, yeah, I think, so those are some <coughs> of my work dreams, you know. Outside of that, I want to be a better brother. Um, I want to be a, I want to have a little bit more relationship with, with a God, you know, a higher power. Um, yeah, those are things that I want to do, man. And I want to help other people somehow. I just want to do something, even if it's little, you know, answer the phone when somebody calls if I know they need help. Not that I would, even if it's some Muppet, you know, that I normally wouldn't fucking answer, you know. You know you're 36. This is about the time that you got to sit there and go, Jesus Christ, what's next now? I did this, I did this, I did this, I did this. Yeah. Where the fuck does it go? Where does it end up? Do I join the Beatles? Yeah. You know, this is, this is a... I moved here, you know, like at 30 something, and it was rough. Wow. I didn't know for sure, and I'm like, if I fail at this, I don't have a lot of options. I could sell over the phone, I could sell cars and shit. <laughs> I don't think I could sell things over the phone for 20 fucking years, though. 
God. So I got to make this comedy shit work one way or another. Like, that's how I, I didn't know. This was it, man. Wow. That's brave, bro. That's brave. Cause Dog, I, I had done everything else. Yeah. Come on. Who the fuck are you kidding? I had every opportunity in the world to learn how to be a brick mason, a roofer. <laughs> a brick mason. Oh, yeah. I could have been a thousand things. An electrician. Oh, fuck. I could have been, been a fucking... Those people who work. lay pipe for the fucking pipes. Uh, yeah. The, the irritation. Oh, the irritation. Irrigation. Irrigation pipes. Some guy fucking, when I was 19, said, listen, man, work the summer if you like it. Invest a little bit. If you like it, you, you fucking stay around. We raise your salary. If you like it, you buy in. He goes, I'm partners with these two guys. We make a little fucking, we cut it up every month. It's not a lot, but at least you make some money. You know, yeah. we get, it wasn't a bad deal, though. I got great, I had great opportunities when I was a young man, though. Yeah. Fucking great opportunities. Then I would, they would come to me and go, listen, man, just stick around. You're a sharp guy. Stick around. Stick around. I want to run this place tomorrow. Yeah. You can't be like that. You can't. And because of stupid shit, I lost great jobs, you know? But I'm happy I did. Because I wouldn't be where I am. To, I, didn't, I wouldn't found what I really wanted to do. You know what I'm saying? Oh, 100%, it's man. It's kind of awkward why you're going through it. I know right. A lot of people right now that are listening to this are going through that. They're, They're going through stuff. Transition from one situation to another. Yeah. It seems like you just have to keep fucking pushing. Yeah, because your life or, or your higher power has a plan for you, bro. Even if you, and I know that, I'm not trying to sound like some Christian weirdo or anything like that. I'm just saying that life has a plan for you and you just gotta fucking you know if you out there getting <laughs> getting your ass eaten through a car window or whatever you're doing just know that that's not that doesn't define you and that's just a little speed bump you know that's just a little that's a, just a little ingredient in your recipe man cause dude I used to bury a guy's shit in my neighborhood for free when I was growing up you know and he died you know I, I, I've lived such a fucking the other part of this holiday I didn't like that it was I had a great Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve was fucking phenomenal. The family and we had a great Christmas too. That was all cool. It was like uh Tuesday and Wednesday got real. Like what the fuck do you do all day? Damn, you had dude, you had a tough you had a tough time after that after well, that Christmas. My, my back's what my wife's back was hurt. Oh. I was at the park with the baby, to be honest. You're riding a little bike with her and stuff like that, you mm -hmm. know? She got a bike request. I was a fucking blast. But, you know, after that, it was like, what do you do? You wait till 1045 to go to the store? Yeah. You're like fucking dying. I want shit to happen. You're like, come on, baby. Let's shoot something. Yeah, life slows down. Life slows down, man. And, uh, for me, fuck. I ain't getting no younger, dog. Yeah. You don't need it? Like, you don't feel like you need, like, a three, four days to do nothing? He probably do. See, that's what I'm wondering, too. How do you not feel like that, man? That's how I would feel a lot. That's how I yeah. feel sometimes. I'm happy to have that downtime. I had downtime. In my world, that was downtime. Yeah. Those couple days over Christmas, that's downtime. You but you had too fam, much of it. You're recharging, blah, 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 blah. In the back of my mind, I want to be writing. I couldn't really write. Everybody was around me. You know, it was kind of distracting over the holiday. It was just... Yeah. It's a bit much sometimes, bro. I did write the fucking book, though. I did write the book every day, whether it was a sentence, a paragraph, a new chapter. I cut something in. I did do that, which was interesting. You That's know? good. But the problem is when you go on the road, I lose that because the computer I have on the road just sucks fucking dick. Wow. It's a surface. And my wife is going to get me another one. I don't know what the fuck happened. I got to ask her what the fuck happened. Yeah. I, I really, you know what, I only focus on that stuff when I'm home and I only focus on it when it's early in the morning. Yeah. I really like to lock myself in. I take two hits of the pipe. And I wa watch that shit. You know? Daddy work. Yeah, it's good, man. It's when your brain is nice. Did and you get to watch the Ronda Rousey fight? And loose. Nah, honestly, bro, I don't like watching women fight, bro. I, like, I, like, I watched a lot of women's street fight when I was growing up. What? And a lot of, uh, yeah, these chicks were always fucking fighting around us. So oh, some man. of it I don't like. I do respect it. I think these women are tough and talented. 
you know, unbelievable. Did you watch it, Lane? <clears throat> yes, sir. What did you think? I thought, well, personally, and I've said this before, that I thought just unsure that like they want the I was like why are they making Wanda the favorite she's been gone for a year and this, and this other girl has been crazy good for a while and my dad was saying today that usually she usually attacks and just gets people down and in 12 seconds they're done and she didn't seem like she had the same urgency this time that's what he said and he he's a very amateur fan and to me, I don't, I, I don't even know about that. It just seemed like, I don't know if she has to be there for a contract or, it, like it, it didn't even it didn't even look like a, a fight was put up to me. I thought it was very sad. Yeah, like I watched I, it. I watched the replay. Like I said yesterday, I said you know, right before it started, I went to the bathroom. As I was pissing, I said, you know what, Ron is going to win this fight. Let her win. Let her retire. Vent her frustrations on the media and how she felt and how she was treated. Tell a few people to go fuck themselves. And you never see Ronda Rousey again unless she's a spokesman for Fox Sports or something. Yeah. They'll get, you know what, Nunez will fight somebody for the interim belt and she'll get the championship back. Nobody's feelings get hurt here. This could be, this couldn't end a better way. I come back, I sit on, I put my feet up, and they're off. And I see what happened. A part of me was so fucking sad. A part of me was so fucking sad because a part of me thought that she'd never recover from that. Mm. If it took her that long. Say what you want about Conor McGregor. He got choked out, and a week later he was out there talking shit. That was the difference between Ronda and Conor. That's what you think the difference is because... That was the big difference, okay? You can't sit in your house. We all lose. I understand you worked hard. I work hard. You work hard. Lee works hard. We all fucking work hard, bro. To, 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 to do anything in this business, yeah. to make a dent in this business, you have to work hard to excel in your field, whatever field that you do. You have to put that extra fucking hour in that nobody knows about. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. You get to work like, ah, but you want that fucking IT job or whatever job you want. You got to put an extra two, three hours in on a Sunday. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what life is all about. Even if you do it at home, you wake up two hours earlier. We all fucking do that shit. What are we talking about? Rousey. Rousey. But, you know, now she's saying, you know, they made a statement. And, dog, nobody was sadder than I was. It's not like I bet her or nothing. I just, there was no reason to. You know, it was I was very entertained with Dominic Cruz and the other guy, if I was going to bet anything, that fight I was just going to sit back and watch. And while it was going down, man, I thought about everything. And I'm like, you know, again, I saw her hitting pads with the guy. I saw her doing nothing different. Yeah. I didn't see nobody different sparring with her. I didn't see no kickboxer in there sparring with her. No. I just saw her hitting pads. And it all came to me, and I felt sad. And I feel sad that she lost. I can't imagine how bad she feels, you know? Yeah. To lose two in a row and like that on national. This one here, that I think a lot of people feel the way I did. She wasn't even in the game. Yeah. It seemed like at first when she got hit, it came to her that she was in the fucking octagon. That's what it seemed like to me. And she was all gone from there. Like Rogan said, she threw a couple kicks, which is something out of her repertoire. And the move she does so greatly, it was greatly, it was gracefully that the chick escaped from it and returned the punch in there. So, Yeah, I think maybe you could be right, Lee, that it was just a contractual thing, you know? I, I have no idea. And... I, I have no interaction with this guy, but why do you guys think she sticks with a certain coach who, from whenever you hear, is... Maybe they love her. No one likes it. No, well, she's dating someone else who she brought to that coach. May, I mean, who knows? I don't know. I don't know enough about it. Bro, you know, man, sometimes loyalty is loyalty, even if sometimes if it's blinded. 
If that's what it is with him and her, God bless her. At least she's loyal to someone. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I mean, they get a lot of the tapes are being released from the fight and stuff. And people have said something. Listen, I'm not an expert in boxing or MMA that talk about who's a good coach or who's not a good yeah. fucking coach. I don't know anything about that shit. All you know is the results in the octagon or in the ring. You know, I know Freddie Roach is good because the Filipino guy Pacquiao has been champion for 2,000 years. Yeah. I know whoever t- trains Floyd May- Mayweather must be good because whoever trains him, I know the guys down Winkle John down there, down in New Mexico, they're good. They got John Jones, they got B.J. Penn, they got Carlos Conduit, and the list goes on and on and on. I know a lot of camps that are fucking great. That don't mean the people are going to be great there. Why Ronda, after she got knocked out by Holly Holm, why didn't she go start anew? I don't know. I mean, she's been busy. She's been, she, you know, she's done a bunch of advertising. I mean, who knows? It's a good question, man. I don't know enough about it. I got to fucking piss so bad, man. So, guy, go fucking pee. I got to do some shout outs real quick. Again, this show yeah, is presented from my favorite motherfuckers in the world on it. Let me tell you something about on it. I've been back on the uh, Shroom Tech sport again. I got to tell you people something unbelievable again. I tried to order the Hemp Force Protein today. They didn't have it. So instead, I got some Alpha Brain. And I got one of the Club Bats. That's how I'm rolling for 2017. I suggest you do the same. Alpha Brain. Start with Alpha Brain because the money back guarantee you, right? And they don't even want the product back. You think you're not sharp enough for 2017? It starts at Alpha Brain, bitch. Go to honor.com right now and press in. Church. C-H-U-R-C-H. And get 10% off your first order. Honor.com. Again, the code is. Church. C-H-U-R-C-H. I want to thank my main man, Rari Oliva, for the badass Bruce Lee book. He brought me a fucking D, uh, an old Jeet Kune Do book. You know, I love you. Jack Wilt. Wilkin, Cat on four three, Talking Lair, Nick Ferrara, Ray Majewski, Darren Carter with his fucking push-ups, Ookie Spooky over the holidays looking good, C.J. Blake, and Rachel A. Little over there getting more married down there in motherfucking Houston. Close that door for your Uncle Joey, though. What's the matter with you? Yeah, I got a slip, Jay. What's that? I don't know what the fuck I want to do in 2017. I just want to fucking live, Lisa. I want to do a podcast a couple days a week with my main man. I want to be a better dad. I'm going to try to be a better husband. And uh, that's all you can fucking be. You know what I'm saying? I know I don't want to travel anymore as much as I'm doing. I got some cities that I got to go to out of respect. You know, so I got to pick my fucking cities next year and make up my decisions. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now I think it's, look, man, I mean, I just love watching you work, man. So I'm happy you are doing it. I love watching you work, man. I'm happy that when we spoke on the phone today, you told me about your decision. I'm kind of, listen, I'm happy when anybody gets sober. I got to tell you something. Even if you you were my enemy and you came to me and you know, I got sober. I've been sober eight years. I got the utmost respect for you because I know where you've been. Yeah. Listen, man, you want me to look you in the eye and tell you being sober is fun? Sorry. I will never fucking tell you that. (laughs) Yeah, man. I've had moments of clarity because after I quit the coke, I went on like a 30-day or like a 40-something day no reefer thing where I just ate pot cookies from the pharmacy. And I didn't smoke. And I remember how different everything felt. Mm. And I wasn't doing coke for a while. It, it's, uh, it's different when you have control of your life totally. Yeah. See, you could always turn down the, the bread off the fucking cheeseburger. Yeah. You could always go to the fucking gym. You could always, you know, not drink and drive and shit like that. But something I always gave into was those fucking drugs, man. Yeah. You know, my life had total control except those drugs. But those drugs ruin everything you're doing. 
Yeah. Just like Lee and I spoke about. All the alcohol, all the heroin, all the pills. You think you're making it happen. I thought I was making it happen. And believe it or not, bro, I was booking big time movies. I, but my comedy was eating shit. Yeah. If you think my comedy is shit now, you should have seen it 10 years ago. <laughs> because there was no emotional connection with cocaine and drinking. Yeah. There's no emotional connection. You're just up there like a, a parrot, just fucking talking stupidity. So yeah. So once that whole booze, whenever I see a young comic on stage with booze, it does something to me. Yeah. Because in all my 25 years, you know how many times I've brought booze up to the stage? Mm. Maybe three times. Yeah. I never thought it looked good. I always thought you'd give me like the wrong impression. I don't know why. And I have friends that do it. I've never said nothing. It's none of my fucking business what people do. In my mind, I just never liked it. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think I could see that. A lot of comics like it because the bar owners, you sell more booze than the comics drinking. Oh, I didn't realize that. Oh. Sure, if the comic's drinking. Yeah, it makes sense. He's up there doing shots. People are going to start sending him shots. And who's not going to do a shot? Let me do a shot with you afterward. Let's do another fucking shot. Next thing you know, you're fucking puking on stage and you're burnt <laughs> naked on Joe Rogan's podcast weighing in tonight. <laughs> he lost by two pounds. He lost by two pounds, but they're both under uh, OB, so I think Ari has to pay now. Who? Ari has to pay. Oh, uh, who won? Uh, well, Segura was 219 today. And Burt was two twenty one, wow. so but they're both they were they both have to be under two twenty seven, so then I, then if they're both under two twenty seven, then Ari has to pay. Wow, what was the price? Uh, no price, just uh, they had to they were both trying to get under mm -hmm. obese, and then there's no price. What does Ari have to pay? Uh, they're going on a trip or to a, an oh, event. Nice, nice, it's a good deal. <laughs> I gotta take a trip, man. I gotta, I gotta slip out of here, Joe. Where are you going? I gotta go home. I gotta. We actually gotta put an episode of my own podcast up. So I gotta go work with my editor. Right, um, man. Listen, man. I'm happy you dropped by and opened up the fucking year with us, my friend. Dude, I wouldn't have had any other way, man. No, man. man I'm fucking happy that you can't come by. So there's a fire out there and shit. Fucking burn we it down, tonight. bro. What a fucking night tonight, my friend. That's what's up, Rocking dude. Rocking and rolling. Listen, I couldn't wait to get out of the house and do a fucking podcast. Amen. I did one last night with those guys. It went well. I knew tonight yeah. would go well with you. Whatever's burning down, fucking, it's fucking close. Let bro. it burn, baby. Trump, baby. Let it burn, dude. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Sorry, just let it burn, dude. <laughs> Don't say that. We're trapped in here with no bicycles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to borrow your daughters. We'll have to borrow your daughters. I got no bicycle in here. Look at him. We got a chair to barricade ourselves with no oxygen. We'll be dead within two fucking minutes. They bazooka this place. Hilarious. All right, my brother. Where are you headed this weekend? Um, this weekend I'm in town. I, I'm in Virginia Beach in a couple of weeks at the Funny Bone. The last weekend, uh, January twenty. Um, six through the well, January twenty fourth through the twenty eighth. Are you writing your sobriety down? Are you writing about your sobriety at all? I mean, right now I'm just. No, I'm talking about on stage. I'm not talking. Oh about going, yeah. No, 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 no. I'm talking about putting yeah. on a notebook about you. What are you feeling? What the fuck is different? Why would I go back to drinking or right. hanging out with characters like Joe Diaz at the two a.m. <laughs> No, right now I'm working, man. I had a, like, I mean, I didn't have a dad growing up, so I still have like a lot of like emotional issues and stuff from growing up. So some of that stuff I got to deal with. So, I mean, I'm always doing my comedy. I mean, my comedy's, I love my comedy. I'm happy to have it. I feel blessed to have this skill and ability. But at the same time, like, I'm dealing with other personal stuff first, you know, because that's what I got to get right. But at the same time, my comedy's is 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 uh, I feel like better than ever. So. You know, it's all simultaneous. As long as I care about myself to keep working at stuff, then everything else will work itself out. I gotta respect that, man. You know, you know I love you. Either whatever you want to do, if you want to do bong hits, if you want to do heroin, I love you either way. If you want to stay clean, I love you. What can I tell you? I just want you to be happy and get the best. You know, like we talked about before the show. Listen, if you know anything about me, bro, I, I can't drive a BMW. Yeah. I know who the fuck I am, you know? Yeah. For me, living here now and having a great time, like I said, 20 years later, I've seen so many people that had more opportunity than me vanish. Yeah. Vanish. Sometimes I look them up on Facebook, so I see them 
the, the, the real estate now or something like that, but they vanished from this. Yeah. You know what? This wasn't really a dream for me. This was more like a, let's see what could happen. Yeah. In two years, if I book an extra role, I'll be happy with that. Can you imagine? All I want to do is be an extra. I never thought Mitzi was going to make me a regular and shit like that. Yeah. Just to be in this situation, to wake up and to be with Lee. I'm telling you, man, I'm fucking ecstatic. Yeah. The other type of comedy is too much fucking pressure. If you look at it now from the outside, there's a level of comedy. You can live your life and do great. Margaret Cho has been doing it for years. Yeah. She's just been sliding through. Everybody else is doing this and doing that. Margaret Cho still selling out improvs on the weekend, bro. Yeah. Well, who the fuck are you kidding? She's been doing this for 30 years. If I've been doing this for 25, she's been doing this for 30 years. You just fucking take a, a three months off and reinvent yourself, write a special, do this, do that, you know? And you're good. You're young, man. You got the world by the ball, so. Oh, I've already lived out. I mean, I've already, all my dreams, I feel like I've already had almost in a lot of ways. So I feel like I'm fucking just playing around and over, you know? Like, I've far exceeded my expectations. How many years you been here so far? I've been doing comedy 13 years. How many years you been in Los Angeles? 13, 12. Then fuck it, deal, Vaughn. You know what? Ride it out. Yeah. You might as well go to Hollywood Lawn and buy a plot and say, listen, I'll see you guys in 80 fucking years, all right? Bury me but fucking. It's, it's done right here. Bury me face down. I want that Lee Syatt treatment. You don't. Baby. You don't want to be over in Louisiana. You want to be buried here. Oh, I want to get buried over there in Mississippi. I, I already Mississippi. found a graveyard I like, dude. Did you really? Yeah, they got a brother that cuts it, dude. <laughs> a brother cuts the grass and he wears a full suit when he cuts it every Sunday, no matter how hot he is. I feel like he probably won't be there when you when you get there. Nah, this man will be cutting grass forever, bro. And he wears a suit. Wears a full it's that suit type of the when South. he cuts it. And then you got little hills out there, and that man cuts it in a suit, dude. How do you get home? You take two flights? I, sometimes I take one in New Orleans and then drive north. Sometimes I take two into Baton Rouge. That's where my family's at now, in Baton Rouge. But, uh, yeah, man, I had a great holidays, man. And I've, it started off great, dude. Did a show with Amy Schumer, New Year's Eve. We fucking murdered it in New Orleans. Now I'm here with fucking Joey Diaz. Now, who's, was... ne who's tomorrow? Fucking Johnny Depp, son? Huh? Let me ask you something. Luther Vandross? Who's next, bro? How big was the Gerald arena? Levert? How big was the uh, theater? For I think 2100. It's at 2100. But <laughs> she had downsized from another place because... Uh, um, just because New Orleans, you're not going to sell a lot of comedy tickets on New Year's Eve. It's a party city. People go there to drink, you know? People go there to drink. Half the people only have television sets, bro. They chilling, dude. New Orleans, Miami... There's a couple of cities that comedy has always been a hard sell. We've discussed this before. Yeah. That's why it was really interesting that you go, she's doing New Orleans. I kept thinking maybe she's doing a riverboat casino. I don't know if they have those there. Well, she does it because she loves it. She, All of her friends, she, it's her favorite city. So she goes there every New Year's Eve anyway. So all of her friends go down there, and it's always a big party. So and you do, you, it's an 8 o'clock show or a midnight show? It was an 8 o'clock show. Yeah, that's how pimps do it. Yeah. You walk out of that 10.30, there's no magic Boom. ball. Pictures till 11. The car's leaving. I love you guys. See you in a year from now. Boom. Yeah, you go yeah it was perfect, man. She, I mean, it was fun, man. She's funny to be around. She's You're just, on your way up, brother, man. She's funny to be around. That's good. You're working. Oh, I feel great. I feel absolutely great. I got a slip, Jay. All right, do, do your thing. I'm going to be over at the Calusa Casino Friday, January 6th, and next weekend, Hilarities in Cleveland. But let me talk to you about something here uh, that you may... Uh, I want to talk to you about a smart way to turn extra money and get an extra $500 bonus driving with Lyft. You know, are you in between jobs? Are you looking to earn extra money? For your kid's college fund? Are you going back to school yourself? Are you thinking of writing the next American novel? I mean, there's got to be something. You're seeking alternative funding for a new startup. Listen, this is what we're doing. There's other ride-sharing apps out there, but Lyft treats their drivers right. It's a flexible way to make extra money anytime from nearly anywhere. All you need is a car. Lyft drivers can make up to $35 an hour and get started is just a tap away. You can drive mornings, nights, weekends. Just flip into driver mode and start making money. Plus, Lyft drivers can earn tips right from the app. 
those apps add up fast, all right? And you don't have to wait for days or weeks to get paid. You could cash out instantly once you've made $50 thanks to Express Pay. It all adds up. Driving with Lyft is super flexible. It allows you to keep 100% of your tips, and it's always there when you need extra cash. Sign up today at lyft.com slash joey. And right now, Lyft has a special offer for our listeners. You'll get $500, a new drive bonus, after you complete 100 rides within 30 days. Go to lyft.com slash joey today and start making extra money and get your $500 new driver bonus. Who's better than Uncle Joey? I got your ass out there pimping, driving, cutting motherfuckers off on Lyft. Again, go to lyft.com. Stop sitting there, you fucking mook. Your grandmother died, left you a nice car, and you're sitting there eating pizza, and you're giving a fuck about who's the who's the fucking kid's father on Maury. Go to lyft.com right now. Is that what it is, Lee? Yes, sir. Go to lyft.com right now, Wait. slash Joey, and start making money and get your $500 bonus right now. How's that one for you? Joey's getting your fucking jobs, huh? How bad is your life when Uncle Joey's getting your job? Well, here's another <laughs> thing, guys. You own a business. You're looking for the right people. It's tough to get right people. If I didn't like Lee, I'd be looking for the right people. But I love Lee. You know what I'm saying? Amen. But he doesn't train. He's yeah, getting better. He's growing. Check in with Ali Boz. He already has my back. Ali Boz no, knows in oh, Australia. Ali Boz sees Ali Boz knows all. No, he doesn't. But listen. Let me tell you something, people. You know I love you all. You got a business. You want to get some good people. It's a new year, which means you want a fresh start for your business. And a great year starts with making great hires. But posting your job in one place isn't enough to find quality candidates. If you want to find the perfect hire, you need to post your job on all the top job sites. And now you can. With ZipRecruiter, you can jumpstart your hiring in 2017. Post your job to 200 plus job sites, including social media networks like Facebook and Twitter, and all with a single click. Find candidates in any city or industry nationwide. Just post once and watch your qualified candidates roll into ZipRecruiter's easy to use interface. No juggling emails or calls to your office. Quickly screen candidates, rate them, and hire the right person. Quickly, find out today why ZipRecruiter has been used over a million businesses. And right now, my listeners can post jobs on ZipRecruiter for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash church. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash church. One more time, go post your your job for free to job. What is it? ZipRecruiter.com slash church. Once again, one more time. Try it for free. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash church. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash church. Amen, bro. Lee Syed spraying out his face, dude. What are you laughing about, Lee? Which Lee, you trying. fucking monster? Can I drop my, date, my dates in, Joe? Your what? My dates. Can drop whatever you want, my brother. I'm going to drop this drop hot. Drop the next three weeks. I'm going to drop this hot batch of universe on you guys. I'm going to be in... Uh, he, uh, all these are American, all American dates, bro. Trump won't let me out the country, son. You know how we doing it. Uh, February, January 26th through 29th, I'll be in Virginia Beach at the Funny Bone. Who goes to the beach in the winter? This mf -er. Uh February 2nd through 4th, I'll be at Chicago, out in Schaumburg, Illinois at the Improv. February 22nd through 25th, I'll be at Comedy Works South. So get in there, get your nuts hard, huh? Bring your hard ass nutsack in there and let's do net. Let's do it right, huh? Bring some pussy, huh, Lee? I guess I'll bring. I'll bring the hard nutsack. <laughs> okay, right on, bro. But Joey, I want to thank you so much, man. I love you, bro. You know that, I man. I love you too. Thank you for coming on. I got fucked up tonight. That those stars and that chocolate. I was unlike other people. Mm -hmm. who, oh, you know, I didn't train over. Lee's hour. hitting that squeal, that beautiful Lee squeal, man. Yeah, yeah. you here. too, Lee. Great to be here with you, man. I really nah, appreciate it. It's a good new it. year. Great Everything is going to be great. Thank you for listening to the church. You know, I love you to all my heart. If you're around this Friday, Tallulah Casino. It's a fun time. Myself and my man, Steve D. Simone. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I love him. Stay black, people. Have a great night. 
or a great day, happy new year once again, do your thing, write your goals, do your push-ups, it's all going to be beautiful, all right, stay black. Love you, bro. Thank you.